Yo guys, what's up? Welcome to Protoss Silver 2 Where we're continuing all those beautiful Protoss plays uh, we're, we're not only retaking Ire, we're taking over the whole world Everything's gonna be ours, and we're starting with Quail Man, the Zerg player Got him! Got him! So be a jam guys, here we go, let's do it We got ourselves a Mizar bit drop right now, thank you Mizar Stream delay timer, out of curiosity only. Mark. A few minutes. It's a, it's, it's a bit longer. It's definitely a few minutes. Uh, thank you very much, Mizar. Dude. Much love. <clears throat> okay, so what are we doing? What are we doing? We're making probes, guys. Four, five, four, five, four, five. Five is our... Uh, also, you don't need to control the your probe. I just have one. I mean, you, you can put them on a control group or not as well. That's up to you. Uh, I put them on one control group, so it just makes it easy. So I can go hold, click the mineral line, shift, click the mineral line, and I can double tap it if I want to at any point in time where it goes. I miss real-time streaming, but I definitely understand the reason. <coughs> Thanks for giving us the best experience possible. No worries, Drunken Panda. Thank you, dude. No worries. And yeah, I, I get sniped all the time if I don't put stream delay on, so that's why I do it. I don't want to do it, but I have to. Otherwise, this series would take four months because I would get sniped so much. Okay, so Zerg has not yet expanded, guys. There's no expansion for Zerg yet, guys. That's, uh, that's a little scary. Uh, a little scary. So, here's what we can do. Oh, to play it safe, yeah. because there's no expansion. Your B2 GM series is so great. It's like a podcast that I listen to at work every day. Keep up the awesome work, Vibo. Nice. Nice, dude. Okay. So, so far, we haven't really done too much. There's, okay, if, if a drone ever does this in your middle line, guys, don't pull your mineral probes off. Only pull your gas probes off and go like this. Gas probes, attack that, dr that drone. And then go back to mining gas after you kill it or he runs away. It's way better than green boxing your whole mineral line and pulling all your probes off your mineral line. Okay, now let's actually... We, I haven't really talked a whole lot. We, sorry, I've been getting a lot of distracted with bits uh, and belt and subs. Cap, Cyanic Kenshi, thank you for the 8-month resub. Much love, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so... What we've done so far? What have we done? I scouted the natural. I saw no natural. So we need to make a battery really quickly. We can also get this walled off now. Again, what are we doing in in server league? We're learning how to wall properly. I could have put that gateway right there, or I could have put that gateway right there. Either one's okay. Either one works. Let's also build our robo right now. Let's also start chrono boosting our probes because we haven't chrono boosted a single time yet. And we'll talk more about chrono. We should start talking a lot more about chrono boost. Try to make it proper. But, uh, yeah. <clears throat> I made a battery because the Zerg didn't expand. Simple as that. I now added all my gateways to group four. And now, uh, yeah. We're chilling out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's actually start making a, um, at this point now, let's start doing something here. Okay, let's start doing something super oh, easy to do. Yeah. Thank you, right side down for the, uh, 14 by 3 sub. Thank you very much, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <clears throat> so, I, I feel like I'm, I don't know, my brain's not fully turned on yet. I feel like I'm, I'm falling behind trying to like, explain what I'm doing as I'm doing it. Even though it's not that, I'm not doing it that fast. I'm just, my brain's not turned on yet. But I'll try my best, okay? I'm trying. I'll be, I'll be t switched on in a minute. Now. Here's what our build is, right? Four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. All that jazz, right? We're making production. And what, is, what does that mean exactly? When I say four, five, four, five, four, five, I genuinely mean you should be checking four and five over and over and over. Not once every fifth, like 50 seconds. Not once every 30 seconds. Not once every 25 seconds. About once every five seconds. Like, do it repeatedly. Because, again... You have to realize the only thing that we're trying to make you better at right now in this video, in silver, is 
how good you are at maintaining your macro. And if you're not good at it, if you're four or five, four or five, four or five, if it's really bad, if it's if you know if it's if it doesn't really stay up to date, like if you forget and forget and forget and forget, and you're like, why do I have twelve hundred minerals in the bank? Why is that? It's because you're not doing four or five enough. It's because you're literally not macroing. So make sure you stay on top of four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. That's the whole point right now, right? Other than that, what have we done so far? I've built a wall, and I left a doorway. We talked about this before. Uh, previously, it's just, again we want to leave a grid spot open, so it's literally walled. I I can still have a door, but I put my if I put my unit in a whole position, I can go like this. Hey, try to walk out the doorway. What happens? My unit gets stuck, just like. If this stalker goes out the doorway, and now this one blocks the door on whole position, that stalker gets stuck. This means the same thing will happen to Zerg units. So, really important to do that, right? So we don't have lings and stuff and roaches just running all over our base. We don't. We definitely don't want that. And uh, other than that, it's it's been the same thing overall. It's it's been the same thing overall. Now here's something we added to our build. Okay, here's something we added to our build. Okay, let's actually go attack this and go save it. Go save that. Let's make a couple of gateways while we're at it. Just because we're getting close to uh, high sub high resources. Okay. We can make another gateway. And then I leave my army here. Am I going to chase those links right now? No. The goal is not to go all in him right now. He just killed my expansion. It's okay. It's annoying, right? But it's okay. It's fine. We probably could have saved it if my gateways were built a little faster. We're going to make our double forage and our council. All this stuff is the same as it always has been. No, we're doing nothing new right now. If you're if you, if this is your first video in Beat the Gym series and you haven't watched anything prior up to this point and you're this is all feeling overwhelming right now, I highly recommend you go back and watch the previous. Just throwing it out there. And now you know how before with Protoss we used to send out like a stalker and a stalker on both sides of the map, and we would see um, where the Zerg's bases were. This time we can do it with the hallucination of a century. So we made a century second this game, and we only need to make the one. What we can do now, or well, really quickly, let's expand again while we're talking so we don't fall super far behind while we explain something. What we can do now is we can grab our century and say hallucination and tell it to make a phoenix. And why do we make a phoenix over everything else here? It's because all these hallucinations can't do damage. They don't do damage. They're literally for the purpose of mobility. And a phoenix is the fastest unit on this entire list. And also it flies. So it avoids terrain. So it's going to get the most optimal scout you can possibly get. And now we can use this phoenix and check every base on the right side of the map. Just the right side of the map. Why are we checking the right side of the map? Because we're checking just like we were before. We're trying to get tabs on how to read a map and how to understand like where bases could be located. And get comfortable with all that oh, kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> now, meanwhile, Vibe. I'm so excited. We no longer have to listen to people asking when the next B2GM is. Also, one year anniversary of Sub and Starcraft. Yeah. Vibe cool. Vibe cool. Thank you very much, Venom Kid, for the 12. I'm getting a new machine with a mix of profit sharing, stimmy, and a bonus from my five year mark at work. Looking forward to using B2GM to help me get back into SC2 after a long break. Oh yeah, dude. Thank you for Drunken Panda. I'm glad you get back into it, dude. You got it. B Jim got you, dude. It's got you. Okay, probe count? 78. Right? 78 probes. We're we're chilling on 78 probes. We're not doing too much right now. We're 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 hanging out. Let's but we did scout the right side of the map and we saw nothing besides the natural, which is pretty normal looking. Let's do the same thing on the other side now. So now we just shift commanded the Phoenix all over the other side of the map. Okay, mineral fields are depleting and we're at 85 probes. Uh, let's go ahead and saturate these. Or actually, sorry, I, I, know, I know where mineral fields are depleting. It's uh, it's right here. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and throw down. Uh, my money is getting pretty high, right? I can't spend it. It's getting pretty high, so let's maybe throw down like a, just an extra like maybe... Six, five gates or something. Just build them anywhere. Build them wherever you can. And now we found another Zerg base. That's now the new most exposed Zerg base that we see. 
Let's take him to the base. Okay. And we can credibly step grades. And immortals. Send some probes over here. I return to serve. Okay. And money is still okay, our gas is starting to look pretty high. Money is looking pretty low. Pretty pretty uh overall pretty good. But I mean we're we're still on pretty close to on par with our max here, which we're looking for at about ten thirty. We're hitting 10.30 right now, and we're just about to pop into that max territory. So things are looking good. There we go. Now let's take our army, and let's attack him on the south side, because we just got into his bases earlier, right? <coughs> so let's go ahead and A move in there. Shift A move, shift A move, shift A move. Now let's hit... Now here's a cool trick I'm going to teach you. Let's hit tab, tab, tab. Observer's at the end. Click the observer. Click the observer's little graphic here in bottom right. It makes it... Go to the observer, or you could just literally go to your army and find the observer if you want to do that too. Right click your observer on one of your immortals. Now your detection is not going to fly into the middle of nowhere and just die. So it's more likely to stay alive throughout the fight. Now during the fight, let's throw down maybe like another, like maybe two robos. One robo, two robos. And throw down a bunch of gateways. Why are we doing this? We're taking our production between 20 to 24. So that way we can remax. Trying to boost our gates, or our, sorry, our forges. Let's make, sorry, make an immortal. Grab all these buildings we just made and add them in our, into our control group for production. Now we're at 22, so that's looking great, looking super good. Um, we can take another base because that base is dying. How many probes are dead now too? We lost four probes. It's okay. Just build a new one. It's a, totally fine. And to be fair, we're mining out of bases, so we probably need to double expand. Like, both bases are mining out. So let's, let's just take another base, because the Zerg just killed one of our bases. So let's grab eight probes here. Let's grab a couple probes here. That's good. That base is good. Let's send them all down here. Mine this base. Okay, <coughs> Chrono Boost our probes. Or, I mean, sorry, Chrono Boost our upgrades. And look at our resources, right? We have way more gas than minerals, so what, what can we do? We can go ahead and uh, spin that gas as a priority, right? So it sets it to two. And you, honestly, you don't have to just count it either. You can just kind of click it a lot as well and just hope for the best. And if you happen to get an odd number, so let's pretend I just got an odd number, okay? And I'm like, oh no, whoops. I got an odd number. I could always just make another one and be like, cool. We have fixed it. Okay. So the Zerg said, how the F macro. That's how. It was just macro. Macro-ola. See this, guys? I'm just going to point out here again, because a lot of people don't realize this. doesn't take 400 APM to do what we just did. It just takes you having a plan. And you can do it off of what we had here this game was 76 APM as the Protoss player. Very doable. It's very doable. Uh, what, if, what if your guy was like, but vibe, I only have 35. It's okay. It, it Just click your mouse a few more times a little bit faster when you're hitting the gateway button. Like, don't build your gateways where it's like gateway, 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 gateway. Don't like build it in a perfect line. Just be like this. Like, unless, unless it's a wall. The only time you have to be meticulous about how you build your buildings is when it's a wall of your base. But other than that, if it's like in your main base, literally just fucking click like a like wild man. You're like, click, 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 and just do it faster. Don't be OCD. Be more OCD when you're when you're actually really fast with your mouse. And you can not only be OCD, but you can also be fast. But in the beginning, just try to be a little bit faster than normal. If you like if you're the guy if for instance, if I say an example would be if I say build like ten gateways right now and you go like this. This is how slow you do it. Gate. 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 Gateway. 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 No, that's not allowed. Nope, mm -mm. that's way too fucking slow. Uh, that's the kind of shit that is you need to, you need to improve on. That that is like a foundation of like a macro with where you get more quick if you're more comfortable, right? And don't oh, freak out yeah. again if it's unorganized. Don't freak out if it's unorganized. Thank you for B two Gramzem. Great and helpful content. Gramzem. 
Thank you very much, Bixel, for the uh, six month three sub, man. Much appreciated. All you gotta do is legit. If I was like, if I was like, build ten gateways, it would just be like this. Click, 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 click. Done. Took me about like two seconds rather than about twelve seconds. And what can I do with those other ten seconds? So many things. Because if think about it like this, if it if I did a task that took me, uh, it took a normal person in silver. If it takes them 12 seconds and it only took me two because I click faster, what's the next the next task gonna take? What if the next task, Jesus, the next task that's like a tongue twister, takes them like 15 seconds? But what if it only takes me three seconds? And what about the next one? It takes them 18 seconds and it only takes me four seconds. And the next one takes them eight seconds and it only takes me one second. And the next one takes them seven seconds and it also only takes me one second. Like all these tasks that keep combining on top of each other again and again and again, you're going to get one player. If you just know, if you have an overall idea of, I know what I'm trying to do here, <clears throat> which fundamentally is we're trying to expand. We're trying to make a probe priority with mineral economy. And then we're trying to fill an army as well with four or five, four or five, four or five. If that's your plan. And whenever you go, okay, well, I'm doing, I'm, I'm hundred percent maintaining my production and I just can't seem to keep my money spent because I have too many probes now, add more production and keep doing it. Keep the process going. Whoever does that faster again is going to be the one who is going to beat the other player in these games every single time. So again, looking at this, also, also one more, well, before we jump into that, I'll, I'll come back to that point in a second, but what do we do differently? Okay. Did, did anything happen differently? The, the thing I'm going to ask for adding into Protoss uh, now, honestly, like mid-silver, is... Kappa, thank you for the five. Much love, Thank man. you for the B2GM series last year. It helped me a great deal micro like a diamond player in silver. I am now a great silver one league player. Thank you very much, Kappa. Much appreciated, dude. Hell yeah. But much love, Bo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, appreciate the five, dude. What all we did so far, uh, other than things were all, like, so again, what are we doing? We're just doing everything we were doing still a little bit faster than we were previously. We're trying to get, we're always, every league we get, every promotion we get, we're trying to get a little bit quicker and a little bit quicker and a little bit quicker. And on average, if you can keep maxing out around 1030 in silver, you're doing great. Uh, Dr. Dark Knight, thank you very much dude, for the six or the, the 25 month resub. Thank you, man. Much love. <coughs> now, now. The only thing we really devi de uh, deviated or changed or altered was like so far is we're still going Stalker, Immortal, Archon at this point now. But what we're really doing as well is we're going into uh, uh, a century now. We're going to also start adding in a century. And the reason why we're going to start adding in a century is so that we can scout our opponent's bases we do it throughout the game so we're just like all right one phoenix go this way one phoenix go this way and what are we doing with these specifically we are not actually looking at the guy's base we're not doing that yet the only thing we're actually looking at with it with like looking at it you know actually we're not looking at anything even in nothing really the first probe doesn't really look at his base either we just want to know if there is or isn't a natural that exists and then the second thing is is when the phoenix go out with a hallucination all we're looking to see is where the bases are located and how many does Zerg have? But we're not actually... I'm not telling you, please, for the love of God, and sort of like, don't start flying a Phoenix in someone's base and go, what is he doing? And then you fly around his base and you're like, I don't know what this means, but I'm trying to figure it out. We're going to... we're gonna, Again, we're going to probably start doing that in Gold League, but we're not ready for it yet in Silver League. We're, we're, right now, all we're getting used to is we're getting used to the ability of the, what the Sentry even does. We're just like, cool, let's make let's make the Hosted Phoenix and let's go... Fly it around the map. Just shift to move it around. Just like we were before. But now we're doing it with the, with the hallucination rather than with the stalker. Okay. So now let's look at the economy really fast already. So we have a situation where a Zerg player went for, you know, gas pool. Or there was actually no gas. It was just like a pool into a double expand. Yada, yada, yada. But it was a late natural. It was because, again, we, why did we build a battery? Because when we first got to the Zerg space, he had no natural. This is after we made the gateway. This is a super late expand for Zerg. So with how that goes, 
those kinds of things are the things that are once again gonna make the Zerg fall behind. Make anyone fall behind. It's not even just Zerg. If you don't expand on time, you literally fall behind. Uh, you literally you'll fall behind. I should put that on there. You'll fall behind. It makes it rough. <laughs> Okay, and again, here, our scout here, let's go back to our vision. So our scout's going to start happening here pretty soon with this sentry. Now, if this is something that happens to you right here, right? If this happens to you in your game and you're like, oh my god, lings that don't even have speed, just, they actually have burrow, just ran at my nexus and killed my nexus. Oh my god. It's not that big of a deal, guys. Like, a lot of people out there would probably, you know, have this happen to them and be like, now it's time to all in. Got all in now. I have no choice. No, you don't have to all in. You're fine. Again, our build is about making probes. It's not about making all in. And if we're going to all in on, like, two gateways, our all, our all in's probably not going to be that effective. So it's not the time to attack right now. That's why we're not attacking. Even though we killed a bunch of links here and he killed my nexus, it's not time to attack. Like, he actually threw away 27 links to kill my nexus and my gate, which is almost very similar resources lost. But it, it's okay, because look at the supply right now. You guys, you guys got to also realize something. Check this out. Look at, look at the worker count already. The fact that the Zerg made so many links to actually smack that nexus like that actually makes it to where uh, he's just behind in economy again. So... If, because, because why? Because if you you can't make lings and drones at the same time as Zerg. If you make something with your larva, you can't make something else. So every time I have a larva there, and if I go, I'm making a Zergling. Well, that was that could have been a drone, but now it's a Zergling. So the fact that this dude just made a ton of Zerglings in the middle of the game and he lost them all is a super good feeling for us that, defensively, because this guarantees I could easily take a fourth base now. Like he he's lower than me in economy, and he also just threw away a bunch of lings. The only, the only benefit is, is I mean, he's giving, making me do long distance mining for a little bit, but it's not a big deal. Because, again, we're not worried about... We're, I, we're, I shouldn't even be getting carried away with the things I'm talking about already. This is Silver League. We shouldn't be getting carried away with these kinds of things. Just get faster at the sequence we've been talking about. It's really all it is. Just trying to really maintain speed of which our macro is. And then, same thing again. As always, once we max out, we're just going to go for it. We're going to go for it when we max... And then now, since we've done Hallucinated Phoenixes on the side of the map, we discovered nothing is up here, and we discovered something is down here. So this is the most exposed base. So easy peasy, we attack here first, because we can make sure our army goes on the left side of the map. Then we attack in this area. 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 Just, like, towards the hatcheries and the middle lines, essentially. And ultimately, this is what the fight looks like when we get to his base. And this is simply because we just... We macroed, and our opponent did not macro as well. Ultimately, what does this mean, Vibe? What are we breaking down here? Another example of macro versus no macro. That's all it is. It's just macro versus no macro. And then look at our observer. Now that it's following an immortal, it actually sticks with the army rather than flying into a spore crawler and dying. And are we microing this at all? No. It's pure A move. And are we we're losing army, but are we maxed out still? Yeah, pretty much. And the reason why is because we can uh if anything does die, we can always just rebuild it. And you know, with all of our gates we just made and all all this jazz, immortals coming, yada yada yada. But the Zerg just had nothing. The Zerg wasn't ready for this. Essentially. <laughs> and again, I, I don't want to. I don't want to go back into like Quail Man's build here and like start taking a dookie on it. I'm, I don't. I don't want to. I feel. I, I feel like it's. I can just round it up. I can chalk it up to this concept. His build was inefficient. And again, this is another situation of inefficiency will never beat efficiency. Efficiency is the baseline for StarCraft 2 
to play a real game. And if you can't play efficiently, you're just always going to die versus someone who can. Like, you can have a guy who literally has no skill at all on anything else besides playing efficiently. He has no micro capability. He has no scouting capability. He has no awareness of the game. And you're more often than not going to lose to that guy if he just plays efficiently and you play inefficiently. Because that is... Then if you guys are wondering, like, what does that even mean, Vibe? Like, what the hell does efficiently and inefficiently mean? Everybody, platinum or below, is inefficient. Believe it or not, it's true. Everybody that is below platinum or in platinum is efficient is inefficient it's just different levels of inefficiency but everybody there is inefficient and everybody diamond and above is usually like I, okay i would say it diamond league's the the gray area diamond league is kind of random like sometimes you get efficient people and sometimes you get ineff inefficient people but then masters league everybody's efficient everybody in masters league is at least somewhat efficient which is why if you put a masters player against like a silver player or a gold player that player is the the lower level player is almost never going to win and it doesn't have to do with every single skill set in StarCraft 2 uh like if, if there was like a level of importance i would say let's just say let's say well, there's like eight skill sets like scouting multitasking micro decision making all these different things all these things out of like if there was like it was like a pie chart or something where it's like what's the most important knowing how to play efficient would be like 90% oh. of all of it or like 85% yeah. out of all eight of these things. So efficiency is by far the most important thing <coughs> to know how to do. And and uh, finally to explain, why is it the most important thing to know how to do, Vibe? Why is efficiency so important? Because if you don't know how to play efficient, everything else doesn't work properly. That's that's all it is. Like if, if, I, if I have the same level of micro of some top level pro, but I have the worst efficiency in the world. Like obviously this is a very hypothetical because this never will exist, uh, but let's pretend it did. Let's say I had some insane ass micro and let's say I'm a Terran player and I give myself two Reapers, but I'm microing like a God and you micro against someone else who has the worst micro in the world, but they have seven Reapers. Two, mic two Reapers are not gonna beat seven Reapers. It's just not gonna happen. And it, it literally, the guy with seven Reapers can just be like, he can roll his face on the keyboard and A move with his nose and his forehead, and he can win. Because more units beats less units in this game every time. And those other skill sets only actually matter. They only actually matter uh, when you can actually play an efficient game. That's all it is. That's all this game is. So again, that's why I'm not teaching you anything else right now. I am not teaching you anything else at the moment. It's just learning how to play efficient. Like, I'm slowly building you up into other things as we go. But it's really just efficiency, 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 efficiency. That is by far the most important thing. Okay, so we're playing a Terran player, guys. And at Terrans, we said we don't really care about walls. We cared about walls against Protoss on the ramp. And we cared about walls against Zerg and the natural. But against Terran, we're just going to say, screw it. And we're going to build a pylon right here. This guy's also really laggy. Oh, no. Hopefully that's not me. I don't think it's me. This is this is awful. I have never seen a game this bad before. Thanks for going so deep to help us all improve. Keep building probes, boys. Yo, Agent Fish, thank you very much for the hundred bits, dude. Guys, I, 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 I honestly, I don't know what's going on here. I have never seen a game this bad before. Like it's, it's like not actually dropping. But it's, this game is being played at like 1 100th the pace of what it's supposed to be played at. Like, by the time this game gets to a minute, I feel like we'll have been in this game for 30 minutes. <laughs> what is happening right now? I hope he drops. I do not want to do this for very long. This is such a waste of time. Oh, no. Like, if this becomes a full actual game and it's, like, 15 minutes long, this game is legit going to take oh, an hour. Yeah. Or, like, an hour and a half. 
Okay. Uh, Black Magic. Thank you for the 16 months, man. So, okay, what are we going to do, guys? What are we going to do? What's the plan this game? Oh, here we go. Let's go back to normal. Oh, no, just kidding. What are we going to do? What's the plan to this game? The plan this game is I'm going to expand. I'm going to build a battery or not build a battery based on if he expands. And I'm going to... Uh, uh, what's it called? I'm gonna do four, five, four, five, four, five, constantly macro, constantly macro. I think this guy's gonna drop eventually. Okay, let's go ahead and scout. Oh, yeah. So let's click his mid line, shift, click my mid line. Current boost our nexus. Thank you very much, Behind Insanity, for the 14 month resub. Thank you, dude. Da, 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 da. Da, 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 da. Uh. Okay. All right, one minute in the game, guys. I think he's going to drop. Nah, that game was super laggy. Go and do another oh, one. Oh, yeah. I don't know what's going on with the MMR here. Is it bugged? It says I'm going to get Masters 3 MMR. But it says I'm Bronze 3. Hopefully... Uh... We actually don't have a bug that will prevent me from getting a promo. <laughs> Good God, StarCraft. Okay, what are we against? We're against another Terran player. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect, dude. Par perfect. Nice. Okay, we're going to be making a pylone. A pylone. Back to mining the minerals. Yeah, let's go ahead and build our gateway and scout his natural. <laughs> let's shift. Go back to mine. Let's take our gas and chrono boost our nexus. That's a really fast ICV. Just wanna tell I just wanna give you guys a tip. If you ever have a worker in your base before a minute, it means they pulled their worker off the middle line right away. Like, he got in my base at 40 seconds. That is... It takes about 40 seconds to cross the map. So, yeah, he's building a gas in my base. That's fine. I, do I give a shit? No. <laughs> this is the moment where everyone freaks out, right? Everyone's always like, Oh, my God! Call 911 now! Skrillex! So we built our Nexus. Added it into our group 5. Let's go ahead and build our core in just a second here. Build our core. And now we're going to have our probes that now want to mine the second gas. Just have them build and go to the gas and start killing it. It's fine. Again, I'm not really like in a rush here. I don't really care. We're, not also, we're also not going to make like a zealot. We are not going to make a zealot. Another thing, here's another thing you could do as well. Check this out. What if we built a gas at my natural? Really early. Why? Because we could actually tell these three probes to go to that gas once it's done. And in the meantime, they can just smack this refinery uh, and maybe make it burn. And then it'll just burn down to death. Because again, Terran buildings, when they start lighting on fire, they burn to death. You don't have to let it burn if you don't want. Like, it's not mandatory. But I'm just saying, like... Like, right now it's burning, for instance, and now we can go, hey, go mine the gas here. But the reason why we're going to mine the gas here is not because it's burning, but it's mainly because the Nexus just finished, so now I can send them to a gas, and now we're good. So we're still mining a second gas, still relatively early. It's not that bad. And he didn't have a natural, so we need to get a battery at our natural. I just don't want you guys to freak out and think that this is so mandatory. Like, pull all my probes to kill the gas. Do not fucking do that. Do not be the guy that does that. Because, again, what is our build? 
It's mineral focused. So who cares that he took our gas? And now look, it burned down and it's just gonna explode. And our gas is freed up and we can eventually take it when we're ready for it. Now let's get our battery. Let's go ahead and get our robo and our second gateway. Okay, we have a uh, Marines are in my base. <coughs> so, let's... Am I freaking out? No, I just ain't moved my units there. Back to my base. Okay, we got a bunker. So what are we going to do now that there's a bunker here? How about we just relax? Just relax. I can make a shield battery here too. If you feel threatened, here's the thing. If you feel threatened, just do this. You're, you're good to go now. That battery is going to be worth so much value right there. It's going to be worth so much damn value. Now, our shield battery, or rather, our warp gate upgrade is finishing right now. So we're going to have uh, <clears throat> the ability to, to now make immortals. And we're going to warp in stalkers. We can also take another base here in a second. Because we're fully saturated on this base. So let's go ahead and do that. This is, a, this is one of the first times as well. Uh... If you guys want to as well, if you're paranoid, you can make your stalkers hold position or you can just not touch them at all and that's fine. Just make sure when you rally point your units, you don't have them like walking into death. Because again, we don't want to fight a bunker right now. We do not want to fight a bunker before we can handle it. We want to fight a bunker when we can handle it, which is when an immortal pops out. So what are we doing in the meantime? We're still expanding. We're still expanding, guys. Okay, and now look, now we have an immortal. So now let's actually fight this. All right, cool. Go fight that. Immortal time. Let's take our last two gases because uh, we, uh, what's it called? We're fully saturated on these bases. And let's transfer probes up to this base. Okay, uh, keep going. My unit stopped. A move towards the barracks. Okay. Give me a couple of pylons. Let's make uh, probes go here. And keep chrono boosting my probes. Chrono boost probes. Chrono boost probes. And why was that so easy to deal with? Why, why did that seem like that didn't do anything to me? The reason why is because, number one, efficiency versus non-efficiency. We macroed and he didn't. I bet when we broke that, we probably had double his supply. Legit. Like, I probably have double his... I, like, he's probably right now, at this point in the game, at, like, 41 supply. Or, like, 44 supply. That's what my guess would be. Like, not very high, guys. And the reason why we have so much is because we did not get distracted and go, Oh my god, freak out, pull all my probes! Like we, we're, we weren't even getting attacked. He was just sitting there with bunkers. So if we just wait until we have immortals, we're so much better off. Okay. Now let's build another Nexus and a couple of pylons. And why are we doing that? Because we're fully saturated here. Let's get a couple of gases here as well. And now keep producing. Four or five. Four or five. Four or five. Four or five. Produce, produce, produce. We can chrono boost our probes as well because we haven't done that in a long time. I have like nine chronos available in all my Nexus. Not, it's a little bit much. Now, let's. we can't really spend our money anymore. Once again, it's growing. So now let's... Also, our gas is getting really high because we have, uh, uh, what's it called? Like, we're getting ready to want to make Archon soon. So, I mean, we're going to want to tech now. The point is, is if, if our money's growing and we're, we're stockpiling resources, we're going to add on to our tech so we can go get ready to go into Archons. Meanwhile, while we may try to maintain four or five, four or five. So I just hit four, S, shift, click, click, tab, immortal. Probe count right now is at 75. Let's go ahead and make these upgrades. Chrono boost them. And we can now make our up, our last final tech building for our uh, Archons, which is the Templar Archives, for High Templar to make Archon out of. We can also take some more gates. Let's take like four more gates. Remember how I said just click the ba click the bases? Don't, don't do this, right? Don't be like this. Don't go gateway. 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 Like, don't do that. Just go like this. Gateway, 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 gateway. Like, wherever it fits, just put it in. Okay, we're getting attacked by some air. So, 
make stalkers and go over there. Keep making probes. And if this guy's gonna attack us with air now, let's do this. Let's make one cannon and one battery in every mineral line. One cannon and a battery in the mineral line. One cannon and a battery in the mineral line. One cannon and a battery in the mineral line. We could also go two cannons and a battery in the mineral line. And that'd be fine. And th here's here's the thing about making cannon battery, okay? Here's what here's a couple concepts of what I want you to know about this. Number one, we made it when we had a really good probe gun already. We're already in like the 80 probe range. Also, we're gonna take another base right now because this base is fully saturated, which so we need to expand again. But we took cannon battery when our bases were already really really well saturated. And number two. He's going for air harass, which means he's going to be back with more air. Like, he's going to teleport BCs into my base again and again and again and again. And it's going to keep happening. So if we actually have a couple cannon battery, it's going to make our lives way easier at not getting, you know, constantly killed with like, Oh my god, all my probes are dying. Okay, because also this dude opened up the game. He opened up the game with... Uh, a bunker rush in the side of my main base. So he has no economy right now. Do we have a sentry? We don't have a sentry. Let's make a sentry. We need to scout with loose nations. Let's get our forges going. For more upgrades. And let's keep making a couple stalkers. Make another immortal. Let's make a couple more gases. Get gases up here as well. Bye 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 guys. What's up, dude? Chrono boost. Our boys. Make an immortal. Okay, now let's scout the right side of the map. So scout all the bases on the right side, all the way to his natural, and let's see if we spot anything on the way there. Now we're about ready to attack, and we actually missed this entry for a while. So let's actually tell. A stalker now to go on the left side on the on the bottom left side and we're gonna shift attack all the bases that way and the reason why we're doing this is because I mean, we just didn't make a sentry because we got distracted by the bunker rush so if we miss it if you forget to do the sentry thing just resort back to stalker but if you don't forget to do the sentry thing definitely use your hallucinated phoenix okay so we're kind of boosting upgrades we're maxing out right now something just killed my stalker down there so how about we just go like this a move my whole army bottom go we're gonna move my army in the bottom and the reason why we're gonna do that is because we know there's nothing on the top we just we, we already know for a fact there's nothing on the top uh so we'll, we'll just go ahead and do that we'll just say army go to the bottom and then you know we'll go from there okay fix my probes that are on bad middle lanes let's go ahead and take another base as well while we're at it because we need to take another base we're, we're mining bases out right now right we're still at a good probe count everywhere though Upgrades. Also, we look at our production. We need more production. A lot more. So let's go gate, gate, gate. Gate, gate. Gate, gate. Gate, 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 gate. Gate, 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 gate. Okay, shift, right click the middle line. Now we have a bunch of buildings being built right now, which will eventually get going here in a sec, but for now, it, it, it's not done yet. Thank you for the sub, Klubes. Much love, man. And Insane, thank you for the Prime. Okay. Let's go and make some Mercons. Another day, another dog. <coughs> Bit. Whatever. Hope you're having a good day. Vi bless them three. Yo, E5. Thank you very much, man, for the 500 bits. Much appreciated, dude. Let's get three, three upgrades going, guys. Let's get all these buildings we just made in our control group. Grab them all. Grab them all. Grab them all. Okay, we're at 23 buildings now. It's going to be 24, 25, 26. It's fine. Let's make a cannon battery here. And now, I have, I don't know if I told you guys this, but this is a cool a cool trick about Templar. Okay, so if we make a bunch of Templar, if we make a bunch of Templar, and you're like, okay, I want to make a bunch of Archons, you don't have to click the button or hit C a lot. You can just hold C down, and it will make all your Archons. Just hold it down. Go C. Let go. So I just made all my Archons by holding a button down because it, it it reissued the command repeatedly. That's why, again, re keyboard repeat delay being really fast makes this 
super effective. It makes it really, really flow nicely. Get behind this. Let's keep making stalkers. And so on and so on. And our army's kind of like chilling now. So let's go ahead and just A move. Shift A move. Get our army going again. Let's go ahead and... Uh, Fix our economies. That's what's important right now. Keep our chrono boosted upgrades going. Make sure the economies are always flowing. Did we wall this immortal in? So if you ever find that you do this, if you're like, whoops, I built like shit vibe and my I walled my immortals in. Guess what? You should you should know that you do this, and the reason why is because you're looking at your base a lot. That's the goal, right? You're not you shouldn't ever be like, there's twenty immortals back here, I never knew it. The only way that happens is if you just don't fucking ever look at your base. So here's what we can do. Let's build a couple pylons on the two gate on, on the gateway and the gateway that are gonna get underpowered if I kill this pylon. And let's just kill this pylon because we just walled it in. And now suddenly there's no more wall in my base. My units can now go out, and I refixed my gateways by building new pylons. And I knew that that happened because I was looking at my base. So let's make some more immortals. Let's make some more stalkers. Okay, we're maxed out again. And now we're good. Another cool thing you can do as well. Here's a cool here's a cool trick you can do as well, guys. Check this out. If I do want you to put everything on group 4 by the way. I want you to put everything on group 4. But if you actually hit your warp gate hockey, okay? If like you're like going through your bases and you're grabbing all your gateways, once they're done, you can go like this. So if you're like, "All right, let's just let's actually say Let's say you don't even have a control group for production right now. Somehow you never bound it. You could be like, all right, grab my robos, group four. Control, like, gr grab robos, control four. Select all your warp gates over here. You can either click it on the top of the minimap or you can hit your hockey for it if you have one. And then oh, now yeah. once you have them all selected, hit shift four. And now, yeah, there you go. You've now selected every gateway that exists anywhere that you've ever built one. So it's also another quick way of like fixing that. Okay, so this guy's not dead. So let's go ahead and A move. Shift A move, 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 shift A move. We A moved every possible expansion that exists on this map. And now let's make like six stargates or something. And why? Because this guy might be literally floating a command center off to the side of the map because that's how he wants to play. So we can just kill him with some voids if it comes down to it. We can get upgrades. But this is this is not the time to like stop playing the game. Let's keep practicing, because we know he's dead. But and we're, we don't have to wait for voids. But let's practice. Let's make sure we, we can keep our economy rolling properly. Ready to blow my stimulus? When you gonna come drink some musty coffee with me? I thought we were friends. Oh, he's got a base right there. Okay, so our army's on its way over here to come kill this. Yeah, thank you very much, people, man, for the two dollar dono. Uh, I, bro, it's COVID, man. I can't I can't leave the house, bro. Kofian. That's my excuse. Mr. S uh, Mrs. Snowman. Or, uh, sorry, Mr. Snowman. Jesus. Mr. Snowman, thank you for the gifted sub as well. Much love, dude. Thank you, thank you. Uh, and yeah, we'll take another base up here. Whatever. And our army's on its way over here to come kill this. So, it's all good. And, uh, yeah. We're still practicing, right? We're still chrono boosting our upgrades. Making sure all our resources are mining well. We can take our gases here. Practicing our macro cycles, making sure everything looks good. And again, our army is on its way to go kill his base right now anyway, so it's going to happen eventually. I mean, he's, he's, he's only got so long to live here. Fix my economy. We like can and battery, just like before. So if this doesn't die, this is the last base. Okay, he's not dead. So now if he's not dead, let's go like this. Start killing my own units. We just checked every base in the map, and that was the final one. And here's why we're doing this. Now let's go back to my Stargates and make a bunch of Void Rays. And we can go We can go to our Nexus, hit Chrono Boost, hold Shift, and go click, 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 click. 
And here's what here's the probably the fastest way I would say you can find someone who plays like this where they're like I'm just gonna hide and never show you where I am. <laughs> Keep making void rays. It's all good. But do this. Watch this, okay? Super easy way to fix this. Click one void ray. Click the bottom right of the map. Shift, A move, the bottom left side of the map. Click a void ray. A move, the bottom left of the map. Hold shift, click the top left of the map. Click a void ray. Hit the top left of the map. Shift, A move, the top right of the map. Click a void ray. Hit the top right of the map. Shift, A move, the bottom right of the map. And then you can now go back to your army. You can green box it. So that way we don't disrupt, we don't do select all army to disrupt the void rays we just made. And we can kind of just like rampantly click all over the place on the map. Okay? So we're looking for like random stuff all over the middle of the map. Like this. It's just chaotic. Doesn't have to be perfect. Because what we're doing right now is we're searching for buildings that are floating everywhere. With these voids from the sides of the map. And now we have uh, our army going all over the middle. If you still can't find them... You can start doing shit like this. Be like, pylon, 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 pylon. Py oh, we found something. Right, see, like, this is the frantic clicking, right? He's running SCVs all around the place and the shit's getting killed. We can tell Voidrays in the middle to be like, Voidrays also go around the middle of the map. Go all over the place. Like, he's hide He's just hiding. He's playing the hide game. Now... If he's not going to die, here's what we can do. Take Void Ray. Now, so Void Rays are all stopped in the corners of the map. Take Void Ray in top left and go to click top right. Take this way to click top, top right and tell it to patrol, okay? Take Void Ray in top right and go to the bottom right. Tell it to patrol. Void Ray bottom right, go to bottom left. Tell it to patrol. Void Ray bottom left, go to top left. Tell it to patrol. And now we found another base in the middle of the map. So this guy, this guy is just a fucking troll. And again, it's okay. We're just frantically doing our thingy. This is, this is how you can not waste all your day being like, where are you? This is like a cool sequence that you can do where you can just like find where your opponent is and not waste your time. Meanwhile, we can take a look really quick. We can practice. Be like, how many probes we got that are idle? Send them over, over to a new base. Blah, blah, blah. We can keep making pylons in case this guy keeps hiding. Just so he can't do this forever. The more vision we, of the map we give ourselves... The less he can keep hiding on us. Okay, let's grab our voids up here and send them over to kill this this barracks. And uh, yeah, I mean it is what it is, right? This guy is uh, he might he might still be hiding, guys. We'll find out in a second, right? Okay, that was it. That was his last structure. So that's just like uh, you'll run into players like that a lot. I feel like, or not, maybe not a lot, but every once in a while, maybe like once a day or like once every couple days, you run into them every now and again. And they're the kind of player that's like, I literally won't quit the game until every building's dead. And I will, I know I've lost the game already, but I will hide. And Terran are the most annoying at this because they can float their buildings around. And if it comes down to it, just do the same sequence we just did. So he can't ever have a building floating on the sides of the map because we have void rays patrolling the sides of the map. And we're going to see how the map has so much vision right now. If it really takes, if the guy is really good at hiding... We eventually will see everything because we'll just build pylons everywhere and we'll just cover the whole map. And every once in a while, again, we're going to check our economy and make sure we're still mining properly. Like, we could expand again. And an another cool trick you can do. Here's a cool trick you can do. Do this. This would also be a good idea. I don't own this space, so I build a pylon there. 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 Like, you can build a pylon outside the mineral line of every base you don't own just to make sure he doesn't own it. So you're not ever like, whoa, shit, I, for the last five minutes I was trying to build pylons over the map and I didn't realize he was mining here. So definitely check mineral lines first and then and then resort to what we just did. Oh, sorry, we should actually go back to the replay and I can show you, uh, uh, what's it called? I can show you the, uh, uh, thingy thingy, the supply when he rushes us. This is where... Let's see how his SCV gets here so fast. Again, this is because it's one of his first SCVs he pulled off the middle line. This means the turn's economy is not as good as ours. See, so he runs around my base. He builds a gas. Trying to be super annoying. He then runs over here. He mines some of my gas and he builds our barracks. Do we care? <coughs> not really. 
And again, did, did we pull off the mineral and hit this gas? Definitely not. Don't waste your minerals. Now he's building reactor, bunker, marine production in my base. That's fine. I don't care. One bit. Not one bit. Now he's building a second barracks. And now that he has marines in my face, do we chase the bunker? No. All we do, all we do is we just sit there away from the building. Again, if it's a, if it's like a finished spine crawler, if it's a finished bunker, or if it's finished cannons, we don't want to deal with that until the mortals are out. And why is that? The reason why is because an immortal does... Uh, in the amount of time that an immortal will do 100 damage, a stalker would only do, like, to a building. In the amount of time an immortal would do 100 damage to a building, a stalker, realistically, like, we can look at the numbers here. The stalker does 18 damage versus buildings, and it is 1.3 uh, attack speed. An immortal will do 100 damage to a building in just over 2 seconds. 100 damage to a building in just over 2 seconds. Like two second, two point one four seconds or something like that. A hundred. A stalker will do eighteen, and then will almost be shooting its second shot by about two point one four seconds. Not even close, right? It's not even close. Like an immortal is so much higher damage than a stalker at killing a building. Also, an immortal is tankier than a stalker as well. It's it's much stronger at, at not only dealing damage but also taking damage. So if we want to guarantee that we're going to break bunkers and cannons and things like that, we want to wait for our immortal. So I'm in no rush to engage a bunker right now. Let's chill. Let's let's sit back for a second and let's just wait for that immortal. And if we just sit back as well, also if, if our army just sits here, you can literally just say hold position. That's totally fine. Just if you if you're like this is annoying to micro. Again, we're not microing anything. We're just sitting here. But if you're like I want to try to prevent my units from always running into the bunker to dying. Tell your units to hold position. Just click the units and say, hold position. They'll sit there and guard the area. And then, and then you're great. You're totally fine. You could 100% do that. And then when the immortal pops out, then you A-move the area you want to go to. And again, you don't micro anything. You don't pull back, go forward. You don't pop guardian shield right now. Again, we're not worried about that. We're just going to A-move the area when an immortal's out. Because once an immortal's out, buildings die fast. And we also made a shield battery here because we feel pressured. So because we feel pressured, we're like, oh, it's a battery. Makes it easy. Now watch what happens when, the, when he attacks us with the battery. So we're making more stalkers. We're chilling. I know there's a bunker right there, but again, do we care? We're making the immortal. Now the immortal's out. And again, look at the immortal. So, okay, actually, the Immortal does 100 damage to buildings every 2.08. Not 2.14. I thought its attack speed was actually 1.07, but it's 1.04. So it does 100 damage every 2.08. That's fucking insane. It's so much more damage than a Stalker. And now that we've waited for the Immortal, not only do we not only have one Stalker, we actually have four Stalkers. So, even, and here's the thing. Four Stalkers? Uh... Four stalkers are going to do very comparable damage to an immortal to a building, very comparable, uh, because four stalkers don't shoot as fast as an immortal, but they do slightly more damage all combined than an immortal does. An immortal does slightly less damage than four stalkers, but it shoots faster than four stalkers. So, uh, yeah, it's it, it's this. Now that we have all of this, we're going to easily break this. And now look how easy this is. Again, we didn't look at this at all. We just a moved and we forgot about it. Forget about it. And now what happens while we're a moving it? What ha what happens here? Look how fast this little bunker dies now. It dies ridiculously fast. And then our units kind of sit there and they stop moving. And we uh, we start attacking again in a second. There we go. The immortal's actually getting kind of derpied. They're uh, derped out. There we go. He goes again. Our sentry died. That's why we didn't have one. But again, it's fine. Because look at the macro when this is over. He actually has less than I thought. <laughs> like, he was even more committed than I uh, than I actually uh, thought he was here. This is so committed. Because when we, when we finally push this back, he has 
23 total supply. And we already have 71. Like this... This is just... Like, again, efficiency versus non-efficiency. We can do whatever we want now and most likely win the game. So, these things are good to know. These things are important to know, right? Super important to, to understand these concepts. And now the supply is just getting really out of hand for us. And then he goes for a battle cruiser, kills some probes, teleports away, gets back to his base, because he has a second battle cruiser now. Again, he's playing a very awkward game. Very, very this is like a very cheesy, awkward, random ass game, but it's done inefficiently as hell. So even though uh, I've lost like seven workers so far, and things like like I've actually taken taken a better efficiency defense so far, in terms of killing all the bunkers and things in my base. But I've lost seven probes. I've only killed one SCV, which is the one SCV that was building in my base. But yet we have just ridiculous income compared to him. And now we're, we're already, again, doubling supply. And this goes down. This is how the games are always going to go, by the way, until we get to Diamond League. Once we get to Diamond League, this will stop happening. It won't be like, well, why does Vibe have double the supply of his opponent for almost... for like like Vibe hasn't attacked the other guy yet, but yet why does he have double the guy's supply? And it's because it's literally the argument of efficiency versus non-efficiency. It's every time. It's it's over and over and over and over. It's all it is. And now he's pushing me with an army of triple battlecruiser, a few tanks. Like it's like a ragtag random army, right? And now here comes our actual army. We're a moving the area. We're just like shift a move all the bases. And it's just not enough shit for Protoss. Oh, sorry for Terran. It's not enough stuff. And now he loses the whole army. And the army just goes down here. It actually finds some of the bio stuff. And our army finally goes up here and fights nothing. Is Silver Lake the highest league you've reached, Vibe? Yep. Thank you, Gecko, for noticing. <laughs> Say something funny and I'll laugh, for real. That was, a, that was a terrible joke. And then at this point, yeah, he, again, he just doesn't have enough, guys. He doesn't have enough, so he just dies. <clears throat> this is where you get players that just play random randomness. It's just random. And it never works. If, if, if It only works if you also play random and inefficient. So, I mean, at that point, now the game's over. We've already won. We can jump out of that because there, was, there was, like after the like after the bunker rush failed, right? He was down to uh, like thirty supply versus like ninety supply. There's no way you're gonna win the game there. That's so you're so far behind at that point. So far behind. Okay, we're, our our Protoss. I hope we get a promotion, but it's all bugged right now. Uh, but our Protoss is only one hundred and thirty MMR or like one hundred and twenty MMR away from uh, Silver 2, or rather Silver 1. Hopefully we get a promo. Why are people in Bronze so obsessed with BCs? I'm always so confused. Everyone in Lower League is obsessed with air. Everyone does it. People make Void Rays all the time, people make Battle Cruisers all the time, and people make Mutas all the time. But the, the, the thing that's hard about this though, about, about understanding how to use that, is those units are terrible unless you actually micro them and get damage done with them. It, they're not good otherwise. And again, th those are units that you should avoid when you can't even macro properly. Because you'll always lose if you play against, oh, again, somebody who plays efficient. Yeah. I'm going to sound like a broken record again, but this is all we really need to I work on. I was hard stuck in gold for three years with my main race. Now diamond in random. Thank you, Vibe. Thank you. Yo, Atlian. Uh, thank you for the nine months, man. Appreciate you. Uh, and congratulations on making it to diamond after being stuck in gold forever. Okay, that was another quick game. Uh, that was Terran. I just built the pylon randomly wherever I wanted. Uh, ideally, you probably want to build it closer to the Nexus, but it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Vibe, are you doing one race to GM at a time? No, I'm doing all three simultaneously because one race at a time would be like two weeks of one race. This shit takes a while to make. Uh, because... Uh, anyone out there who's like... But Vibe... 
I saw someone else get fucking beat a GM really fast. It's because I'm doing guide format where I play very slow paced and I explain everything and I, I take time to make sure you know what's going on rather than playing in silver at like a GM level and then just speeding through it and being like, just do that. You know what I mean? So I try to make it doable for and people. I, I try to make it approachable for people to like get into it because I want you guys to actually like know what the fuck you're seeing to a degree. I still want you to be pushed and feel like, you know, you have to like struggle to improve. I don't want you to feel like it's, wow, this is easier than I already play. Because if it's, if that was the case, you'd never win games. If I was like, this, this, do this guy that's worse than actual server play. It's so easy. You just sit here and watch your Nexus the whole time. Uh, like you never move your camera once. You sit on one base. Like that would be a terrible guide, right? But, uh, yeah. Okay, so we have a Protoss player. And what we did... Now that's a Protoss player, again, we're trying to understand how to wall properly. We're going to put buildings on top of the ramp, and we made the pylon range go really close to the ramp. Again, center of the building is what needs to be in the pylon field, not the whole building. So, like, look how far we can build buildings, right? We can build the corner of the building way the fuck out of the pylon field. We're going to build our first building on the corner of the ramp here, and our second building will go, like, right here, and then we're good to go. We're not going to build it yet. I should actually scout him, too. We're not going to build it yet, but we will build it once it's the core. So let's hit his mineral line. Shift click my mineral line. We just going to boost our nexus. And we're going to get ready to expand. We're going to get ready to expand. We're going to expand, guys. Ex expand our horizons. Expandola. Vibe has a huge delay on a stream. Does he do that on purpose? Fuck yeah, I do. For beta GM, yeah, it's because of stream sniping. Avoiding that. Uh, I, I, yeah. It avoids making the series worse, essentially. Okay. So, he doesn't quite have a natural yet, but he has some stuff in front of his natural. So, let's, again, we're not going to try to decipher what that means yet. We're not going to be like, we actually don't need a battery. If there's no Nexus, just build a fucking battery. But just keep it that way. Always go, okay, no Nexus, we build battery. Okay. Let's go ahead and Chrono Booster Nexus again. go ahead and build our battery so we don't die. <coughs> Let's go ahead and make our sentry. And now, again, we're just worrying about our money, right? Four or five, four or five. Are we spending? Are we spending? Is the spending doing well right now? Hopefully, yes. Four or five, four or five. Okay, we're doing a good job spinning, so now let's get our... And I can't spin anymore. So we have extra money, let's build with it. Robo and a gateway. Grab them, add them into our control group of group four. Rally point them all to the front of my base and keep building. Keep making the probe and the unit. Bronze to silver two to bronze three to GM. Thank you very much, Freeze, for the 100 bits, dude. Thank you, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Go ahead and make uh, another pylon so we don't block. And look at our look at our nexus. It's almost, or it's now it's like fully saturated on the middle line. So what are we gonna do? We're gonna expand again. Okay, let's also uh, get ready to start going with our production over here with our robo and everything. So we're gonna make stalkers and all that jazz, the immortals and stuff. They give uh, freeze and age of fish. Is to just walling off at your natural against every race? Yes. You don't want to wall off. Uh, and here's why. We're taking a third base a lot of the time, right? 
Well, okay, okay. Good question. I want to answer this question more in uh, higher leagues and make you understand why that is. Uh, and just to give you a, sne a sneak peek and not go full breakdown onto it, because again, it's a silver video. I don't think silver players need to know this right now. But just to give you a sneak peek, there's a lot of things that can abuse you if you wall the natural with Protoss. The only thing that can't abuse you is Zerg. You actually abuse Zerg when you wall the natural. But if you wall the natural against like a proxy Rex or like, like a tank push or a immortal timing, like you're just going to get fucked and you're going to be like, oh, my production has to die before I can even take the fight. It's not good. It, it makes your life harder, in my opinion. Like, it takes, like, a really high-level player to make it work properly. So, yeah, I would not recommend. Thank you very much for the bits, though. And thank you for the sub. Uh, felt like so. Thanks, dude. Okay, let's, spread our, let's spread our pylon radius here so I can make more stuff. Let's keep credit boosting our probes. Make units. Make an immortal. Let's scout the map with this sentry. Let's take one phoenix and click every mineral line on the right side of the map. I will comply. All the way to the main. We want to see how many bases he has. I return to serve. I am here in the shadows. <laughs> Okay, making probes. Let's take another base because we're fully saturated, as always. We're always trying to expand again every time we fully saturate. Thanks for B2GM Vibu. I found another Johnny Sins movie called Five Guy Cream Pie 26. Yep. I am not sure what it is about, but I am thinking that perhaps it is about baking. Nice. I am eager to watch it to learn more about how to make the perfect pie. Nice, dude. Thank you very much. Uh, but like for the bits. Beautiful. Plat 3 to gold 1 to plat 3 to gold 1 to gold 2 to gold 1 to plat 3 to plat 2 to plat 3 to gold 1 to gold 2 to gold 1 to plat 3 to plat 2 to plat 1 to plat 2 to plat 3 to gold 1 to gold 2 to gold 3 to... Oh fuck, he'll just play... I'll just play Southern as a Catan. Nice. That's a good... Actually, that's a pretty fun game. I'm not gonna lie. I think Southern as a Catan is actually really fun. So what have we been doing, guys? I know we haven't been talking a lot because there's been a lot of bit drops going and everything. But what's been going on? All I've done is I've been making probes. We're almost at 85. Four, five, four, five. I still have two gateways and a robo. My money's starting to get kind of high. I went for uh, upgrades first for weapons and shields. And then we can also get our temple archives. And then after, I'm going to go into more production as I can't spend my money anymore. So And we, we also have the other base that's finished. And now look at the economy. What am I going to do now? It's pretty much fully saturated, so I'm going to expand again. Go expand again, boys. Hold shift, click the mineral line. And let's build some more uh, some more units. Would you find it crazy that I've been playing this game up to eight minutes with just two gateways and a robo? A lot of people freak out and they make like seven gateways at like four minutes. And then they have really bad uptime of building. Of, and they're, they're like, well, if I don't do that, how else am I going to spend my money? Uptime of building near 100%. That's how. Four five, four five, four five, four five. Okay, so we just made an extra few gateways. We just made six more. Great, awesome. Add the mineral control group. Move this probe down to a new base. Take our gases down here. Probe count is done. And now let's take our sentry again. And let's scout the other side of the map now. Bottom side. Let's scout all the bases on the bottom side. Keep kind of boosting upgrades. Let's grab our probes off the uh, the Nexus because it's oversaturated and send them to a new base that needs to be mining. Grab these boys, put them on some gas because it's oversaturated again. Mineral fields keep depleting. Grab some more probes, put them up here. Great. Corona boost my shit. Okay, we're about ready to move out, guys. Let's do one final scout. So we just reconfirmed again. Now that the left side of the map is expansionless, there's no, there's nothing to worry about over there. Let's take one more Hussein Phoenix and go right side, and see if this guy's expanded to a fourth base at this point. Let's also take another base ourselves. The reason why is because again, bases are mining out. Now this natural is going to mine out soon, soon after. Like this patch is already about to deplete right here. Like it's going to mine out soon. 
So once this starts mining out, that's going to follow quickly after. And then once this starts mining out, this is going to follow a bit after and so on and so on. Let's grab a couple probes, send them up here. And now there's no new bases for our opponent. That's totally fine. So now we have confirmed. We just confirmed where I'm going to attack. We just confirmed it. And where is that going to be? It's going to be right here. And then I'm going to work my way left into his base. Totally fine. So let's get my army and A move up to the front right there. Let's go ahead and make like one more robo and a bunch more gates. So hold shift and go gate, 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 cool. Hold shift, click a mineral line. Keep getting upgrades. Where's the robo? I built the robo, didn't I? There it is. Okay, let's take my army. A move, shift, A move, shift, A move. Awesome. <coughs> okay. Grab all my gates I just made. Grab all them gates, boys. Grab all them gates, boy. Okay. And let's make a bunch of... Uh, let's get our upgrades going with Chrono. Let's make a bunch of units again. Again, it's all about remaxing, guys. It's all about remaxing. Mineral fields are depleting. Fix that right now. We can take gases here because it's getting close to full saturation. Okay, let's Chrono boost upgrades again. And we can start a couple of Immortals, just to have Immortals going. Keep making units. Clicking all over the place. Now look at my economy. Lots of gas, right? Lots and lots of gas. So, what are we going to do now? We're going to make some Archons. Okay, hold C. We just made Archons. Awesome. Let's make a few more. Okay, we can make a few more Archons. That's great. Now I guess we can just finish off with Stalkers because, again, we're going from now into a mineral priority of an economy. And we're good to go. Okay, so let's A move towards what's attacking me now. That just so happened to be what happened there. Okay, that was uh, pretty random. That happened to attack me right there. Get shield and weapon upgrades and let's start, keep making army. And I have no money right now. I have no money. And why do we have no money? Because we're, we're able, like we're actually losing army really fast, and I'm able to actually like, you know, build shit quickly. Okay, let's try. Oh, this mission didn't die. Sick. Okay, I thought it died actually. Okay, we're good. We're good. We're not good. Fix. We're good. Uh, come up here and saturate that base. Trying to be some upgrades. And let's go attack him again. Where we just attacked him a second ago. On uh, top middle. So now we got all our stalkers. Let's take our army. And let's move it up here. And get ready to go attack his base. Okay? Get ready to attack his base. Now, don't freak out and don't stare at my army. We're just gonna, you know, make sure we're macroing out. We just took it around and we're, we are. So now my army's grouped up. Now let's A move, shift A move, shift A move, just like we did before. Chrono boost my upgrades. Produce whatever units I can while units start to die. And uh, make sure economies are still going. Our economies are going great right now. Economies are still going super f fabulous. But this base is getting close to mining out. But now look, look at our supply, it's dropping. Make units. We still have more minerals than gas, so let's make stalkers and immortals. And this base is mining out. Let's fix. Send them up here. Okay. Do more stalker. Fix that. Send a probe somewhere else that needs probes. Another mineral field depleted where? Oh, mineral hoods are putting here now. Let's send some probes away now. Go up here. Now, this base is getting close to full saturation. Let's take another base while we're at it. Okay. 
And the reason why is because we need, you know, more economy to take. Once, once all the bases start running out, we need to always keep the probes rotating around. So we always want to make sure we have another base ready to go. So when our bases look like they're kind of filling up pretty quickly, take another base. Okay, now I'm, I got no minerals anymore, but I got a lot of gas. So we're making some Archons. There we go. We just made a few Archons again. Awesome. Keep currently boosting my upgrades. Uh, we're done with weapons and shield now, so let's now just get finally into uh, uh, armor here. And everything's looking good. Every uh, fix that. Everything else is looking good. Send them up here. We can now take a couple more gases here. And you hear that vestment guys are exhausted? Fix our, fix our probes right here. Grab them. Send them somewhere else. Like up here. Mineral field depleted. Somewhere else. Okay, we're good. Everything is looking so pretty fancy. Everything's looking nice. Now let's reinforce my army because, I mean, we're still in there. So let's take our army, A move it, go up there. Just reinforce our, a lot of our units that are already there because they're still they're still there, and I'm I'm still maxed. I can't make any more units anymore, so I might as well take one, another A move. Go help, go help, guys. Now, be careful though. Be careful about A moving. Like, don't be the guy that repeatedly A moves when you only have, like, 145 supply or, like, 162 supply. Don't be the guy that does that, okay? So, I've seen people do this before, and it's really not a good thing to do. Let me let me explain. Just keep building probes, girls and boys. Thanks for B2GM. Oi. Yo, Myrna. Myrna. Thank you very much, Myrna, for the 25. Uh, and that's correct. What you just said is correct. Just keep building the workers, guys. Keep building workers and you're gonna go places. Now, I want to explain this really fast. This is a concept about a moving someone, okay? For like, for, for basic understanding of what you're supposed to do. I have seen people before get in a situation like this where their opponent doesn't quite die to their first attack. And their opponent kills the army. Like, it'd be like for instance, it'd be like my opponent here, Blue, killed my army. And let's just say my supply, like all my production was on cooldown, or I didn't have enough money to remax, or something like that, and I actually only had, uh, I only had like, uh, like 148 supply, or like 152 supply, and I let's say I made this army right here. I have like eight stalkers and four archons. Uh, don't mind the probes and the rocks. So let's just say hypothetically, I had like eight stalkers, four archons, and maybe like two mortals. That is not the time to go, okay, time to fucking A move again at his base. It's not the time to do that. Because if your army dies in his base and you're not maxed and you're barely making units, don't just let your units trickle into his base like a little bit at a time because you're going to repeatedly die. Probably, like The chances are you're going to keep throwing your units into the garbage can. <coughs> so why did it make sense that I sat here making units, making units making units and then i went okay let's a move the reason why is because i am able to easily max out i was a i was able to hit 200 supply also have a bank that's in my bank a little bit i have a look like i can i can make more supply right now right i can that's way more than i need for like four supply right there i have more than enough supply to max also i have more than enough production available to also max and the reason why this is happening is because my units are dying slower than my max. So if you get to a point where you're like this, where you're like, well, I, I can't really make units now. I'm, I'm making units slower than I can actually make them because I, I keep maxing out. Then it's okay to A-move your opponent again. It is not okay, though, to A-move your opponent before you max out if you're struggling to max out again because you are not you don't have, don't have enough money or you don't have enough uh, like gateway production or whatever. Don't literally don't be the guy that goes. Ah, I'm at 149 supply. Time to go. Let's attack now. And then your last army just died. And then this new army just dies. And then you go. Okay, now I'm at 128 supply. Let's a move again. If you fucking if you do that, if you keep doing that, you are going to throw the game away so fast. So understand that we're maxing out and then attacking. We are not attacking repeatedly on like low supply with like an army that is only literally 40 supply worth of value we're always attacking with an army that is like 120 supply value because again 200 supplies total we have 85 probes so our army is genuinely 115 supply in size 
That's the idea. <clears throat> now let's go back for a second. Let's just quickly take a quick gander at this game about the supply limits and all that, all that stuff. You know, how the game was going, how it was developing. So we already have a supply lead in this game. And why do we have a supply lead? Why, like, if you go, like, here's an example, guys. Vibe, neither one of you has lost any resources yet. Yet, you have almost 100 supply, and your opponent only has about 70. He has 69. Why, why is that? Why do you have more supply than your opponent right now? The reason why we have more supply than our opponent right now is because he made so many Stargates. He made way too many Stargates way too fast, and he also made double cyber cores. He made way too much production before he can handle it, and he made it before he started at a third base. This is also a tactic that I see repeatedly being used in lower leagues. I don't know who the fuck made this a thing. This is not a thing. Please don't do this. Anyone out there, do not fucking long distance mine your gas. Don't do that. Mm -mm. Because I'm telling you right now, if I did a build, let's let, let me give you an example, okay? Let me let me give you an example. I, I'm gonna please listen to these numbers. They do make sense. And repeat the vod of you of the YouTube video if you need to do it. Let me explain something really fast. If you go uh, for like like what was this guy's build exactly? Did he go all the how many circuits did he make before he first took his first expansion? I want to see this. Okay, so he forged expanded. He made cannons into an expansion, okay? So he started his expansion when my expansion was more than halfway done, right? Now he makes a bunch of Stargates behind this. He goes Gateway, then Core, then Stargate, 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 Stargate. <clears throat> I just want to see what his build is so I actually don't misinterpret it. I know it's all Stargates before third, though. Here we go. Now he goes Double Core, Mass Stargates, So notice how he makes six. Okay, so the build like this, right? Your build is two base, six Stargate, and double Cybercore. You cannot afford to produce out of six Stargates this fast, which is exactly why the first Stargate has done nothing for a long time. The second Stargate's doing nothing. The third Stargate's doing nothing. Fourth, th fourth, fifth, sixth. All the Stargates are doing nothing. It would be better off if you just built like two Stargates and just built units out of them the whole time. Rather than not building anything for a Maybe long time. Maybe it was the 11 months he spent in the womb. The doctor said there were claw marks on the walls of her uterus, but he was our miracle baby. I was just too burnt out on raising you guys to care so, he turned out a little soft, you know? A little doughy. I don't know. Maybe it was my fault. Maybe I ignored the guy. Uh, thank you very much for like so. Uh... I don't know what that even meant. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but thanks for the bits. Um, but yeah, like, this is what we're talking about with downtime. Uptime and downtime. If your building has a lot of downtime, your build's not good. Efficiency. If your build, if your buildings have a lot of uptime, then your build is good. And now here's another example, okay? Another example. Again, I, I don't like picking on people, but this I'm just pointing out facts here, okay? Let's So, six Stargate, just doing nothing. And then all six Stargates make units at the same time. What if two Stargates made units constantly and you can get the same amount of Void Rays at the same time because you wait like two, the time it takes for two full rounds of a Void Ray, you just sit there doing nothing and then finally on the third Void Ray round, you make six at once. Whereas if you made two rounds three times in a row and the guy finally makes all six when you're making your fifth and sixth Void Ray off of two Stargates, at the same time you guys both have six Void Rays. Focus, man. Thank you for the I 50. I know I owe you more, dude. Been watching the stream forever. Respect. No worries. You don't owe me anything, dude. Thank you very much for the 50. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you so much, man. And uh, thank you for choosing to support the content. You're a fucking boss. Uh, but yeah, so like it doesn't make any sense, right? It's just, it's just it's inefficient. And why is it inefficient? It slows down everything. It makes your whole build crawl when you do inefficient stuff like this. It's not like it's free. And then secondly, look, look at something like this, for instance. Let's take a moment and let's think about this for a second, okay? Look at the look at the time it takes for a weapon upgrade. Look at the time it takes for an armor upgrade. They're the same amount of time, right? They're the same amount of time. These are these are efficient concepts. So our weapon upgrade finishes 
at like six minutes and 14 seconds. This is before a Void Ray is even out yet. Now let's look at armor upgrade. Uh, armor upgrade is again, it's about, it's about two minutes, right? It's a little over two minutes. So two minutes and nine seconds. So we're gonna have our armor upgrade. If we did an efficient version of this, of what if after his first upgrade, he could have armor at eight minutes and 23 seconds, right? Eight minutes and 23 seconds, he would have one one voids out of one core. But now let's see, does anything happen before 821? Or 823 rather? No, and nothing happens. So the armor would be done now anyways. This is this is the thing where I'm talking about where you guys people do this kind of shit all the time in low leagues. They build way too much and they just don't build out of it. Like it's like saying this. It's it's like saying um It's like saying here, here's another concept, okay? Let me give you a real life example. Let's just say uh you are going to like let's say you're running a business. Let's say you're, a, you're running a pizza place, okay? And let's say you're trying to calculate how many pizza delivery drivers you need. And you're like, all right, so if I'm getting pizzas at a rate of two pizzas needing to be delivered every hour at my pizza place. Oh, I'll start over. B2GM brings out all the weirdos. Thank you, Barry. Thank you very much, man. Uh, if you're like, okay, I, I need to order, I need to hire employees that can deliver pizzas at two an hour and each employee, it can usually on average deliver a pizza once every 30 minutes. I think for that job, I'm going to hire six employees. And you think about it mathematically. You're like, what? Like if you pay one guy, you could literally have one guy do that. Like he could, if you could, if you're only getting two pizzas an hour, and one guy can deliver pizzas once every 30 minutes. He can deliver two an hour. And that fills in what you need. And you go, no, we're going to get six pizza guys, pizza delivery guys. And it's like, okay, well, we're just going to waste a bunch of money paying five guys that sit there on their ass doing nothing then the whole time. Inefficiency. You're wasting money. It, like, it's not a good way to run an economy. It's not a good way to run your business. Same thing here. Like you have all these fucking stargates, right? That these stargates, yeah. There's four being used right now, but for the last like 90 seconds, they weren't being used at all. And then you get like these route, these waves where it's like, you know, nothing happens for two minutes, and then finally you slam out four void rays or five void rays at once, and then nothing happens for two minutes. What if again, again, this develops bad habits in a player's mentality where they just never look at their production. Again, the good habit to do is four, five, four, five, four, five. Which is again here's here. Let me blow your mind. For, hopefully, this blows your mind for a second. I'm fighting against a guy who has six stargates. Okay, think about it like this: he has six stargates, six of them. He has a gateway. He has seven production buildings. I have two gateways and a robo. I have three production buildings. He has more than double my production building capacity here. He has more than double. Three production versus seven production, right? Yet I have 67 army supply right now, and my opponent has 52. So my opponent, who has seven production buildings, has like 80% of my total army value when I'm the one on three. So how the fuck does three production buildings have more army supply than seven production buildings? And the reason why is because of uptime. It's because these buildings aren't ever doing anything. They're just sitting there AFK half the time, like more than half the time. They are legit idle. Like I, I literally don't think this one target has built a single unit the entire game so far. And it's, it's again, it, I, again, I know I'm picking on a silver player when I say shit like this. And I'm not trying to pick on anyone in, in particularly here. I'm not trying to like be like, well, this guy just needs to learn better. Everybody in silver does this. I'm really trying to pick on the entire silver league here because you're if you're a silver player You're just like this everyone in silver league does shit like this you build so much shit and you don't need to And the how do you learn well vibe how can I understand what I do need to build then number one focus on Producing out of your buildings. That's number one step number one because you know what that does it teaches you 
how much resources you can handle. How, how much can you handle for resources? That's the first thing it teaches you, is how much resources you can actually handle with your, with your economy. It's not just random. It's not like, it's, you don't watch a pro gamer and they just randomly throw fucking buildings down and go, I don't know. Maybe we can afford that. <laughs> I have no idea. No, it's not like that at all. They have so much, the people who are good at this game, they know this concept of, they go, I know what my buildings can handle because I've done it so many times, which is why they know that. And how do you learn how to get to that point? Produce out of your buildings. That's it. You just produce out of your buildings. And if you go, okay, well, I am producing out of my buildings right now and I can't afford as much as I have here. Like I have, I have way too little money. I, I, I don't have enough money and I have way too many buildings. Next time you play a game, cut your fucking, uh, cut your buildings back. Cut your buildings back a little bit. Like this does not be inefficient. This is just super inefficient. It's super inefficient. Is all I'm trying to say. It's very inefficient. Because it's too much with too little. You have too little economy for too much production. The amount of... The, the amount of... Uh, the amount of... Uh, economy this would need to support this would be literally like 85 SCV... 85 probes to afford this. Something around there. Legit. You cannot afford this otherwise. And he's doing it off of an economy that's half that size. Anyways... Anyways, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is, is this is why we have supply leads, guys. We have less production, yet more supply. Because we have been ma we have been maximizing production out of our buildings constantly for these checkpoints we have for the style of our build. It's very important to understand this concept if you want to get better at StarCraft. Like, it's mandatory uh, if you want to get at least a Platinum. And like, see, like, here's another thing too, right? Six stargates, and yet also at the same time, twelve cannons for just the third base. And the, the, I'm not gonna go super deep into this because this is very advanced. But let me just tell you a concept really fast. The more production you build, the more likely. But like, the more production you build before you expand, the more you need to be aggressive to your opponent, because you're putting yourself into a hole. That is not economical. It's it's putting you into almost like an all-in. And this is completely counterproductive to that because this means you're not going to attack at all because you're investing into static defense structures that are defending your base defensively. You're making cannons, right? So these concepts of the build do not pair well together at all. It's like saying this. It's like saying, I'm going to, like, let me give you another example. It'd be like like something that's really easy to understand. People People might see this and go, I don't really understand. But let me tell you exact another example everyone should understand that is exactly what we just saw here. This is the equivalent of a player at the start of the game taking a probe and going to the opponent's base and proxying four gateways. And then while they proxy their gateways, all they do with their gateways is periodically make units that will then rally back home to defend the nexus that they're going to make eventually and try to expand. They're just going to proxy gateway production to then have units walk all the way back across the map to defend their expansion. It's like you're going for proxy, and what does proxy mean? It means you're going to attack your opponent, right? But you're not. You're going to go six six stargates early, and then you're not going to utilize. You're not. You're not going to. You're going to go for mass production early, but you're not going to utilize it. This is concepts I want you guys to start being aware of in this game, because this is the kind of shit that makes no sense in a build. It makes no sense in a build. It makes your build bad. It, 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 efficiency beats non-efficiency every single time. So here, now look at our army, right? We're going to go attack him. This is going to be a terrible fight for us because we're having Mass Stalker versus Void Ray Cannon. And Void Ray Cannon is going to obliterate Mass Stalker. Like, just in, in terms of value, Void Rays are better here. In this, in this particular type of situation. As you can see, we just got manhandled. And also, Immortals can't even hit air. And he has no ground units at all. So let's take a quick look now at resources lost. My guess... This is my guess, okay? I haven't even seen it yet, but here's my guess. Resources lost. Blue Protoss is probably at, like, 3,000 resources lost. Somewhere around 3k. 
red per dos, which is us, we're probably around like 7k. Let's see. Thank you, Vi, for at the 10K. 2GM. Your lessons are the reason my Protoss was able to reach Platinum for the first time ever. Your only fans is pretty good, too. <laughs> thank you very much. <coughs> well, Capitan, much love, dude. Thank you, thank you. Uh, but yeah, so that was a great that was a great fight for uh, Blue, right? You're like, damn, he took a he took a fucking amazing fight there. Probably feels super good about it, right? It feels amazing. But again, two concepts here, right? One of them is the like, or the, the or really just one concept: economy. Our build is efficient, and even though we just took a fight where we lost six thousand resources over what he did, so it's nine k to three k. We're still mining more than that every minute. Uh, like, we're, we're able to make the difference every minute because we're mining 600 more gas in his a minute and we're mining 1,300 more minerals in his a minute, which in total is 1,900 resources a minute. And there's been a lot of minutes in this game that's going to easily overtake. So if we're, like, mining basically 2K resources a minute, if we're going to round it off, and we've only lost 6K more than him up to this point in the game at 12 minutes, go back to 9 minutes, and we've already made up the difference. And then 8 minutes, 7 minutes, 6 minutes... Five minutes, four minutes, everything back there when we had a better economy is all bonus. That's why we can remax and fight this again, even though we took a terrible fight. Vibe, you lost me at this point. Again, these concepts are over. I If, you, if I lost you, it's okay. If you're like, Vibe... I don't know what the hell is uh, being said right now. It's okay. Again, this is a server league video. I'm not... Guys, let me tell you something really fast before I continue. I don't expect you to understand what I just explained. I literally even prefaced the explanation by saying, I don't expect you to understand what I'm about to say before we talked about it. The reason why I talked about it, though, is it's a concept that as you get better at StarCraft you will 100% really begin to respect the better that you get at this game. Don't take your money. Like, okay, let me, let me, I'm going to say one final thing. Okay. One final thing, one final thing. And then we'll move on from this. I'm not going to, I'm trying, I'm going to try to not give you an analogy here. I'm trying to just give you a, a concept again, but it's going to be really fast. If you have, a limited amount of money and you have two options to do something with your money and one of those is invest your money to then generate more money so you have more money in five minutes in the game like you just you, you make money faster throughout the game or if you over invest into production that you don't use and you invest only a little bit of your money into then making more money. Which one of those is better? Making a bunch of buildings that don't get used, which slows down your economy. Or just making an economy. And making your economy so powerful that you still get the you still get those buildings at some point. But you make them a little bit later because if you invest into your, your economy first. I... Again, this is something that I feel like like if you're a higher level player, you're like, yes, 100% vibe. I understand what you're saying. If you're a newer player to the game, you might be confused still. But there's plenty of room for us to grow. It's all about efficiency. It's the whole it's the whole point of everything. What is another way to explain? What is another way to explain what I just said? Bronze 3 video I just made. Bronze 2 video I just made. The Bronze 1 video I just made. The Silver 3 video I just made. The Silver 2 video I am currently making right now. All of these videos leading up to this point has been about this concept. Efficiency. Mineral focus. Making expansions. Making probes. 100% trying to maintain uptime up cl as close as we can to 100% in our buildings. These are the concepts that I'm talking about uh, with what this is. So if you don't understand... I'm just know that it, I'm literally just saying the exact same thing that I've been teaching you the entire time. I'm just wording it in a more, in a, in a more now a way that focuses on tech rather than your nexus. It's the same fucking thing though. So again, our opponent shows up to our base, right? 
and we just threw away a big army. He shows up, and what happens when he shows up? We're on aim. We're, 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 our, half our army's not even there. It's not even in the right spot. Half his army's attacking half my army. Half my army's not even there. And then we a move, and we crush this fight. And the reason why we crushed this fight, partially, or realistically, is because all we did was we followed the rule of our economy, and we made Archons, and we made Stalkers, whatever was, and we even made Immortals still, whatever we had more resources for. More minerals, we make minerals. More gas, we make Archons. And we crushed his army, and then now, once that army dies one time for him, he'll never be able to remake it again. He'll never be able to get to that point again that he was just at. And the reason why is because he doesn't have enough economy to do it, guys. He doesn't have the economy to do it. This play style is very much like an all-in. Because he's running out of money. Like, he'll again, look, I'm, I'm maxed out and I'm pushing now. He has no choice but to fight. Otherwise, he dies, right? And how come he's going to die now? Because everything leading up to this point in the game has been inefficient for him, and he has no choice now but to be this far behind. Uh, because look, look I've, I've even still, even to this point, I've still lost more resources than him. I have still, he, he has still played a more efficient game in terms of losing units. So, like, he's killed more than he's lost. But he's not given himself the tools to, to develop a good economy. So it doesn't even matter. Like, we're still... We kill one of his armies, and he just can't replace it. It's just dead now for him. This is our third army this game. We lost one army fighting here the first time. We lost a lot of our second army here fighting uh, the Void Rays. And this is our third fucking max out. He almost maxed out once, and is never going to be close to doing it again a second time. Because it's not efficient. And look at the supply. We're constantly just like maintaining, right? We're just rebuilding as shit dies. We're going up again. And now he's dead. Because he has he has literally nothing. And then here's our next max. Our fourth max is on its way to his base. Economy is everything, guys. Economy is everything. You have you have to understand that. If you don't understand economy is everything, you'll learn at some point. Like th there's no way you're going to get Like I just want you to know. I want you to know this. This is this again. This is a fact of StarCraft. You cannot physically make it to like Masters League or Diamond League if you have zero emphasis on economy. If you're like, you know what? I don't really care about the economy. I feel like that's not the part of the game that I want to focus on. I want to focus on other stuff. You'll never be Diamond and you'll never be Masters. It'll never happen. It, it will legit never. I, I'll save you some time and just tell you right now. It'll never happen if you don't care about economy. The only league you could potentially make it into by not caring at all about economy is potentially Platinum League. And the reason why it's Platinum League is because inefficiency can beat inefficiency. And that is, po that is very possible. I've, I've said that many times. And people in Platinum League play inefficient a lot of the time. But in general, once you get to Diamond League, there is still some inefficiencies there sometimes, but a lot of people don't play inefficient anymore. It's it's mostly efficient, in one, like to a degree. Once you get into diamond, uh, so you, I, again, like it, it's not. It also, playing efficient's not that hard either. It's not even like oh my god, vibe. I can't. There's no way I could play like that. It's the easier part of the game. It is the easier part of playing StarCraft Two. It's the part of the game that is gonna be uh, eventually. It's gonna become autopilot for you. Okay, oh we're playing like another laggy player. It's going to eventually become autopilot. And you're going to be like, I don't even have to think about my macro. I just do it. Because I'm so used to it now. That's the goal, right? That's what you want to do. Okay, we actually got a scout as well. Let's click his middle line. Shift click my middle line. Let's just see if he's going to go for like a really quick nexus. Burr, 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 burr. 
Let's go ahead and build our uh, Nexus in a second here. Okay, he. So if, if your opponent does this to you, if your opponent does this, they block your Nexus with the pylon. Don't be shy. Try and take a different Nexus. Fuck it, dude. We're going to be expanding really fast anyways. Don't be shy. Just ex just get your base down. And I'm still making probes. Let's actually put two probes on the gas now. And let's make our core. Like, don't freak. Again, don't freak out. And be like, but vibe, there's a pylon there. How do I deal with that? I have to pull probes and kill the pylon? Do I have to make a zealot and kill the pylon? No, you don't. Please don't do that. Just build it, uh, build your third base as your natural. So this is now my new natural. I'm still going to take this later. I'm just going to have this first. Okay, let's build another pylon. Take our gas. And now start rallying my probes down to my third base. Because this is fully saturated, fully saturated, fully saturated. Now we can start making stalkers. And so on and so on. While we make probes for the third. <coughs> and it's like, vibe, what if you took this base too? I would have taken this base. I don't give a shit. I would have just taken that base instead then. Just expand. It doesn't have to be all uh, tidy. Like, it has, doesn't have to. Like, you want your natural, right? Definitely go there if, if they're not blocking it. But if they're blocking it, fuck it. Just take your third base. Save yourself some frustration by waiting. Don't wait so long to be like, well, I got to wait until I build that. No, just build at your third. Because you're th going to take your third either way pretty fast this game. Okay, so I'm making a sentry now. Now let's also make a robo and our second gateway. Because again, we have money to spare. We're still maintaining full production on our buildings. Five, how much does switching races hinder my growth as a player? A lot. Don't, if you actually, anyone out there who wants to get really good at StarCraft 2, if that's your goal, don't off race. Off racing it doesn't help you, it hurts you. Don't think, don't get, don't fall into the fallacy that is thinking that if you off race, it makes you understand StarCraft 2 faster. That's not how the game works. And the reason why that's not how the game works is because your off race is never going to be as good as your main race, first of all. So you're not going to even be playing games at the same skill level of your main race. And you're not going to get good examples of what you, that even happens with your off race. Until you level it up and play it a lot. Which is going to waste a lot of time. And the second reason why it's not worth it is because when you off race, you learn matchups that aren't even related to your main race's matchup. Like if you're a, a Protoss player and you're learning how to play Terran versus Terran or Terran versus Zerg or Zerg versus Terran or Zerg versus Zerg. Those are not even remotely important to learn for Protoss. So, it's not worth your time. It's a waste of time to off race if you want to improve as fast as possible. Okay. We're making stalkers. We're, ma we're making everything, guys. We're making all that stuff. Let's go ahead and let's do a sentry. Hallucinated Phoenix. Scout the top side of the map. Let's just see if he's uh, expanded up to the top side at all. Do you have any expansions up there? We're fully saturated here, so let's take our third base with economy. Let's take a couple of pylons. So that way we can increase our building surface area in our base. Shift click the mineral patch. Build some stalkers. Okay, there's no bases in the top middle area, top right area. Okay, we don't want to block, so we just built another pylon. We can chrono boost our nexus for probes. And now our third base is almost fully saturated. We're looking good. Let's take another Hussein Phoenix and let's send it on the bottom side. Because we just scouted the top side, so now we want to scout the bottom side. We want to see if this guy has an expansion. Okay, look at my money. I can't spend it anymore, guys. We're getting really it's getting becoming really hard to spend my money. So what I'm gonna do now? Let's take our forges and our council. Okay, my opponent has a base there, which is fine. Okay, we're fully saturated. Let's take another base. Fully saturated. Take another base now. Let's go ahead and expand here.
Keep spending my money on units, making making probes. Keep making immortals. Try and make production as much as possible. Keep making probes. Let's take our gases here because we're good. Let's start our upgrades over here and let's get Archons ready to go. Let's get an Archon building. Now we're getting attacked. Select the army, go up there and attack towards that. Okay. Probe count's almost done. Let's go ahead and transfer probes to the Nexus that we're trying to build. Let's build the Nexus again. It got killed, so let's rebuild it. Keep making units. Maintain production. Let's get our gas going here. Get our gas going here. Transfer some probes to the middle line. And let's even take another Nexus because uh, why? We're already mining out of the main base a little bit. Like this patch is already getting depleted. And this base is already going to be fully saturated because we're at eight, we're about to be 85 probes. Like this is going to be, like look at the amount of probes already on it. And they're still coming. So that base is going to be super, super saturated really fast. Okay, let's start chronobusing our upgrades. And we haven't needed to make any more production aside from two production buildings, guys. And why is that? I'm doing a great job of spending my money. Awesome. I haven't even needed to increase it yet. It's starting to go up a little bit now because our money's starting to get really crazy. But up to this point, on four fucking bases, five bases, I still have two gateways and a robo. And why is it happening? Why do I have so many expansions? Because I keep making expansions every time I fully saturate a base. That's why. And now my money's getting crazy crazy. I can't stop it anymore as much. Like, it's becoming very difficult to spend it, so now let's just explode our gateways. Let's make, like, six gates. And we're also done making probes now, because we have 85, so... Now that's that's a thing. Mineral fields are depleting again, so transfer some probes. Put some probes on the gas. <laughs> Put probes on the gas. Now the space is fully properly saturated. We got this space over here. Get, ga get uh, shields and weapons. Get all our gateways and add them into our control group. Make a couple stalkers. And now we're, we're getting to a point as well now where... Uh, uh, we're getting a lot of gas, right? So let's start making Archons. Let's start making some Archons. Also, I can't really spend my money. My money's going ridiculously fast. Let's make like four more gates. I can't spend any of this money. I have such long cooldowns. Like, now my money's getting crazy high, crazy fast. But I'm trying really hard to always spend it. I'm not just, like, not looking at it. I'm not just not paying attention to my economy. Or, to, to, sorry, to my to my buildings. I'm always hitting four, four, four. Let's build, 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 build. I can't build. <coughs> let's make these into Archon. Do I still have a sentry? I do. So let's scout the base. Scout the top side. Let's do the same thing. Let's scout the bottom side. Check every base that we don't own towards his bases. I sent one to the top. I sent one to the bottom. Okay. Fix our economy. That's good. That's good. Okay, so we know he has a third base in middle, in top left next to the main. Let's go ahead and current boost our base over here. Okay, now he's attacking me. Let's A move that area. And let's keep producing units. Okay, what's my probe count looking like? We're still at 85. We're looking solid. Okay, current booster upgrades. And now we're about to max out at uh, right about 10:30 again, right? So we're getting really we're doing a good job of maintaining the max out here uh, around the time we want. Now let's get ready. Our, get our army going to his third base because that's where we want to go. So let's get my army going up there. It's all really scattered around the map. So let's maybe group it up really fast. It's everywhere. And now my army's kind of grouped up, so now let's go A move right here, because it's really close to his base. That's like in front of his base, so again, we're going to group it up right there. <laughs> now, A move, shift A move, shift A move on the three bases on his mini-map. Fix my economy. Also, make another robo. Make more gateways. Okay, we're getting hit by Dark Templars. So, keep making probes. Start making probes and make a couple cannons and a battery at all my bases. Make a pile on there so we can keep power it more. Make cannon battery in this base. Cannon battery. 
Hey, cannon battery. Cannon battery at this base. Why are we doing this? Because he's got Dark Templars. And I saw it because my base was getting destroyed. If my base dies, it dies. It's okay. I guess what I'm going to do. I know my base is probably going to die, so let's build another Nexus over here. Am I focusing on killing the DTs? I don't give a shit. I'm going to build units. All right, let's look at my gas minerals. Let's actually build Archons. So we got Archons. And then we made a bunch of Archons. Okay. We can make another Observer. Let's grab all my gateways wherever they are. And add them into our control group. And we're good. Now we have 24 buildings. Let's get some gases here. What's my supply count for probes? It's 80, 84. <coughs> Alright, good. Good shit. 84 probes, guys. We're about to be 85 with the last probe that we're making right now. So we're, we fixed the economy. We're good to go again. Let's make another round of Archons. Okay, we'll make these all into Archon. We can take these gases here. <clears throat> okay, let's make uh, a lot more stalkers again. We'll make a couple of observers. And why are we making observers? We're making observers because, uh, I mean, he's got Dark Templar. And we literally saw that. We legit just saw the DTs that were all over my base. <clears throat> okay. Go ahead and make, DT, make another Archon. And look, he's attacking me right here. So we can just group my army up in front of my base. It's all good. <coughs> I don't really care about those DTs that much because I have defense everywhere. They're not going to accomplish a whole lot no matter where they go. Let's fix my probes. Fix my probes. Fix my probes. Probes are good. Send them over here. And now let's take another base. Make some stalkers. We can even take another cannon because he killed my cannon here. And now let's set up on his base again. Group my army up right here. Like just go group because again we we warped the units like literally all over the place. It's super all like awkward. We can start upgrades as well. Transfer a probe because that needs to be transferred. Let's just transfer it there. It's fine. Transfer a couple probes here. Let's just go up here. That's fine. Now my army's here. Let's A-move this base. Shift, A-move that base. Shift, A-move that base. Now let's go to my observers. Either go to them or hit tab on the control group and go to them at the end. And let's right-click one of, like, the stalkers. Which, because, why? Because they're a range unit and they're in the back. This way they're going to probably not die to cannons. <clears throat> nice. Nice. And now let's, let's look at this for a second, okay? Watch this again. So our opponent did some annoying stuff where he's like, I'm blocking your natural. And then he went mass DTs, right? He's trying to play a game that disrupts our game as much as possible. But did we let it happen? No, we didn't oh, care. Just focus on yeah. macro. Keep making probes. We're making probes the whole time. Cannon, cannon, battery. That's right. Connor, you got you got it, dude. Connor, you got you fucking that's gold right there. You already said it. Boy. So look at the supply already. Look at the supply already, guys. Again, nothing has really happened right now. The the only thing that's happened is he actually he just lost his probe to my stalker when I shot the pylon. And I think the reason why that happened is because I think he wanted to build another building to block my nexus here even longer. And if he would have done that, we I don't care. He's just wasting money. Like, fuck it. It's an, it, this is things that become a problem at, like, Masters League because micro is a serious thing. But it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. So, uh, you know, it's all good. Uh, now, look at, again, look at the economy. 31 probes to 22 probes. So, uh, overall supply is 26 to 37. And why is this happening? This is happening because our opponent went production before expansion and we went expansion before production. We're both going robo gateway. Or we're both going two gateway robo, right? We have the same buildings. They were just built in a different order. Our my opponent went gateway, robo, nexus, core. So robo was prioritized before the nexus. And our build was gateway, nexus, gateway, robo. So our build was definitely a nexus a economy priority and his build was a production priority which is why we have 
a lead because we're cranking probes all day and his nexus probably goes idle a lot which is why in three minutes in the game we already have a worker lead of nine that's kind of shit you don't want to have happen remember we're maintaining production as much as possible out of our buildings we're not it's not cool to be like all right we're gonna let my nexus go idle for 144 seconds which is a little over two minutes. It's like two minutes and 22 seconds. Or, uh, sorry, two minutes and 24 seconds. Like, we don't want to do that. We don't want to let our buildings be idle. It's bad. Because if we let our buildings be idle, that's how we fall behind in supply. That's how it's inefficient play. And now, although he blocked my natural with a pylon, we don't even care. I got my natural again. It's my. It's just my third base instead. And now look at the supply. We're doubling. Why? Are, wh okay, if you're like vibe, why are you doubling supply right now? Well, our opponent has six gateways. Currently, five are currently done. Right, six gateways and a robo. This is the exact same thing I was talking about last game, with six stargates. Guys, this is seven production buildings seven production buildings on two bases, right? One time I pissed on a Terran player's chest. I still have the tape somewhere, and the news media would love to get their hands on it. That Terran player ended up a president of the USA. Oh, God. And I pissed all over him. Ooh. GG, idiot. Oh, my God. Crow Dance is fucking legendary, dude. Purple Heart. Thank you, man. <coughs> Much love. Thank you, thank you. Hell yeah. Barry, thank you for the for the bits. You can't spell good analysis without. Without what? <laughs> Barry, thank you for the bits. And Cronan, thank you for the bits, guys. So again, this is the same thing as last game, guys. It's, ex it's exactly the same. Seven production buildings. Right? On two bases. Seven production buildings. Guys, we're on three. I have two gateways and a robo. That's it. Now, let's take a quick gander here really fast at army supply. Our opponent has 20, and we have 31. Why do we have 31 supply in army to my opponent's 20 when my opponent has 7 production buildings and we have 3? We have less than half of his production, and, the and it's the same exact buildings. It's just more gates for him. He has 5 more gates than me. Or, sorry, four more gates than me. Why why is this a thing? Why why are, why are do we have more supply? It's because of the rules I keep telling you guys about that, uh, you know, I, and again, I, I, I don't want it to sound like you guys aren't listening, but some people in Twitch oh, chat make it seem that way. Yeah. <clears throat> They're like, Vibe, it doesn't make any sense. Vibe, does it get annoying when in the low league people don't seem to know the game is over and make the game three to five minutes longer than it should be? No, also, I don't, I don't happy 11-month anniversary. You forgot again, of course, <clears throat> and on my birthday month, I know you forgot that. Uh, sir, Gamer War, much love on the 11 months. I never forget, okay? I'm just shy, okay? I'm, uh, I'm a shy guy. Uh, thank you for the 11, though. Much love. And I don't I don't think it's annoying when someone doesn't leave the game. I don't care. Uh, like, it doesn't make me angry. I'm like, the fuck out, you lost. It's totally fine. And the reason why is because all that person's doing is they're trying their best to win the game. Uh... The only, the only one that I've, that I've played so far out of this whole series, uh, or like t this video today, rather, that I thought was a little annoying was the Terran player who just hid in the middle of the map, and they weren't even mining minerals. He was just hiding in the middle of the map when my void rays were going around the corners and the sides. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, just go search for it. Like, all it does to you now is it makes you go, do you understand how to go search for buildings? It's not a big deal. It, like, it, it wastes a couple minutes. It's, it's whatever. Uh... But yeah, anyways, what I was saying is, guys, again, we're talking about the concepts of B2GM. The two core underlying factors that we've been working on so far in Bronze and Silver, which is how we're getting... This is this is the concept of this right here. How the hell am I getting a 1030 max? Did I just shit that number out and randomly make it and go, 1030, yeah, uh, I don't know. 1030 sounds good. No, I didn't make a random number of 1030. 1030 is what I believe your quota is as a player to, if you can do that, you're doing great for your league. 
you're doing great if you can actually manage to hit these numbers in Silver League. Because what that means is, is it's a, it is a certain threshold of maintaining production out of your buildings. Out of like you're you're actually you're doing an economy focused build, which is mineral focused because we're expanding a lot, and you're also maintaining production out of your buildings relatively well. I would if you wanted me to put a percentage on it, like it's definitely not a hundred percent efficiency. It's not like you're um, flawless. But I would say for a 1030 max out with a with a mineral focused build, you're probably maintaining about like uh uh what I, I'm sorry I just heard Hannah scream <laughs> just distracted the shit out of me I don't know if you guys heard that but uh you're probably maintaining something around like 70 percent realistically it's not terrible it's 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 not perfect but it's definitely good enough to get you it's gonna feel good right you're definitely gonna uh, progress with that. And this is why when things like this happen, where my opponent shows up and starts attacking me, and I don't even look at it, and I A-move, I still crush because we just have more stuff. We just have a lot. Efficiency. And now our opponent is still on two bases, right? With a lot of gates produ producing units. And again, now... We still are on two gateways, guys. I am still on two gateway robo, and now the supply is 51 army supply for me versus 26 for my opponent, who is on seven production buildings. Soon now to be eight production buildings because another gateway is getting added on. It's all about maintaining efficiency, maintaining production out of your buildings, and work. keep building out of what you have. Don't just build buildings randomly, right? That's, you don't want to do that. That's going to screw you. That is not how you play StarCraft. Hey Vibu, if you are shy guy and Emma Cooper, we should team up to kill that damned plumber. What? Oh, you're talking. Oh, you're talking about Mario. Sorry, I was like, took me a second. Uh, yeah, let's get him, dude. Koopa, let's get him, dude. Let me get my mask. <laughs> Much love, dude. Thank you for the bits. I actually, for real though, I, I actually every time I play Mario Kart, I always play shy guy. I actually really like shy guy. Okay, so then when we push him, it's just, again, now look, once again, same thing in, right? More production. The production's not even being utilized yet, and it just keeps adding on. Another robo. Uh, more more stuff. More gates. It's too much. You just need to, you have to maintain first as a priority, and then add on more when you have too much minerals. Because, because and it's, again, guys, four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. That is everything for this game. It is everything. It's so important. Uh, you ha you have to master that. Like, if there's nothing else to wor work on in uh, in silver right now, it's literally four, five, four, five, four, five. Because I, I here's here's uh the final thing I'll say uh, about this. Okay, we'll, we'll let this guy die first and we'll say it just to see what it looked like. This is what the attacks finally looked like when uh, we hit him. It's like a little blob versus a big blob. And the DTs come out and start killing the army, right? So we lose our entire army to Dark Templars. But it's okay. Because it's not that's not the priority. We're not trying to win the game with one army and we're done. We're remaxing over and over and over and over and over and over. <coughs> it's about giving ourselves momentum the entire game. And now look at these DTs. They're running around everywhere they go. They're just like, oh my god, cannons. Because we let him kill one of our bases. And wait, oh, let's protect the rest of our bases. So, um... Oh, fuck, I actually forgot what I was going to say. Damn it. I was going to say... I, I think I was just going to say, like... Oh, yeah, I... Uh, I think I know what I was going to say. I was going to give you, like, quotas. Four or five... Between going, like, four or five, four or five, four or five... If you can max out... If you max out around 11 minutes... It's, like, needs improvement for Silver League. That's definitely, like, in bronze... But it's it's gonna probably still win you games sometimes in silver, but you definitely can do it faster. If it if you max out slower than eleven minutes, you one hundred percent 
need to rethink your four or five situation. You need to get better at it. You definitely need to get better at it. Uh, anything below 11 minutes is definitely way too slow. That's that's where it's like super inefficient. Uh, the only exception would be to that is if you get attacked early and then it throws off the timers, then that's fine. But if the game is passive until that point, which a lot of times it will be, there's no reason to not be at that supply other than the fact that your macro needs some serious improvement. 1030 is definitely good for silver. And then 30 seconds above that is good for gold. So 10 minutes is good for gold. 930 is good for platinum. So just think about that. If I'm Platinum League, I'm going to be going for 9 minute 30 second max outs. And you're maxing out at like, let's say 13 minutes. That is so much different in terms of the amount of time you're taking to get to that point, right? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind, guys. You need, you need to know these things. You need to know these things. Oh, yeah. All right, we got another Protoss. Barcode. Not actually a barcode, just name barcode. All right, dude. All right, dude. Okay, so we're going to make our pylon. Try and make our pylon towards the ramp. Again, there's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Uh, that's fine. This is not fine. Or that is not fine. Do it in the range where it's like almost at the ramp. Like there it would be fine. Make our gateway. Let's go scout his middle line. Ship scout ours. Four five, four five, four five. Oh yeah. This guy likes me, guys. Hell yeah. I appreciate that barcode. Thank you, dude. So we go ahead and make our nexus. Let's make our uh, core. And he um, he doesn't have a natural. So what are we gonna do? Make a shield battery. Once we get a pylon up at our natural, we'll make a shield battery and we'll be fine. Not gonna make it too complicated. Not gonna worry too much about it. Just add a shield battery because there's no natural for our opponent. How many Reapers should I build as Terran to obtain a 90% win rate? How many Reapers should I build as Terran to obtain a 90% win rate? What? Uh, I can't answer that. That's such a random. That's like a troll question. I feel like it's not even real. That's such a, that's such a situational thing to say for me to give an answer on that. Millions, dude. Millions. Millions of them. I hope that's not a real question because if it is, that's impossible to answer the way you worded that, and the way like without having games to see. Like every game's different, but if, I don't think it's a real question. I think it's I think it's a fucking troll question, like a random silly one. Okay. Okay. So let's make our. Uh, if he's attacking me with the zealot guys, let's just a move our probes at it. A move the probes at it. Let's make our robo. Make our gateway. Chrono boost our nexus. And we can make our shield battery. Do 
do it again. A move our probes. If we're getting attacked and we're not feeling confident, we can A move the probes, guys. Don't need to micro it, just A move the probes. Again, we're waiting for the battery to come up. And what are we doing as well behind this? We're making probes. Now, if you get really far away from your base, maybe pull back. Maybe go back to your base. Right click back to your base. And we're also getting all in, so what are we going to do since we're getting all in? Let's go ahead and make a Chrono Boosted Immortal. That'd be a great idea. Okay, we A move, a move my probes again. Also, this guy is... I think this guy is sniping me. Uh, it's, it's starting to feel that way a little bit. Keep making probes, though. I don't know. It, 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 this is kind of a weird conversation we're having here. Grab my workers, pull them back because they're running really far away. Am I really am I really panicking right now? No. I gotta work, but nah. He's still attacking me. Hey, move my probes. Let's build another battery. We're still making probes. Probes are the priority, for sure. Okay, we're done. Go back to the mineral line. And tell my units to go back to the front of the battery. Warp in some stalkers. Chronobus probes. Or an immortal. We can't make an immortal right now because we don't have enough money, so we can Chronobus probes. But again, are we getting distracted by the attack right now? No. I'm focusing heavily on making my uh, my economy and my, my probes and stuff. We can also always fall back as well. Like, if our army dies, it, it dies, right? But again, the, the goal you probably want to go for here is you want to go for defending your battery. That's the ideal thing. Now he's attacking again. Pull my probes. Fuck it. We let our army die, so now this is the result because of that. You really want to make sure you defend your your natural if you can help it, but if it, if shit fits the fan, pull your probes. Just a move your probes, and it's it's not the end of the world here. Now he's leaving my base. Let's just make it a rule: every time I, he leaves my ramp, let's just go back to my mineral line and go back to my battery. Okay, army sucked on me. Come back to the battery. Right click towards the battery. Okay, we transfer some probes. You must construct additional pylons. We need some pylons. And let's get ready to take a third base. Okay, group my army up at the pylon, uh, the battery again. Here's a cool trick, trick we can do too. We can overcharge our battery. We'll talk about this in a second. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about, we'll, we'll break it down and explain what that just did and what it does. Let's fall back to the battery. Go back to the battery. Just keep walking to the battery. Like, this guy's super aggressive, right? So let's just keep standing near my battery. Let's also expand again. Because we need to, because my mineral line is fully saturated. I know this is one of those things where it's going to be really hard for people to, to defend this. Okay, now he's taking my third base. So now let's A move towards the third. A move towards third base. Okay, keep making immortals. Keep making stalkers. Make all my stuff. Saturate my, my mineral line, my gas. And see, I'm just gonna throw it I'm gonna throw it out there and say this, okay? Guys, no disrespect to barcode. Your barcode, barcode, please don't take this the wrong way. Barcode, I I I'm not saying this to be an insult to you, okay? Don't take it the wrong way for what I'm about to say. Please don't take it the wrong way. <coughs> I just want to say this one thing really fast, though, because this is very true. Uh, for the, the fact that my opponent in this game, the, the fact that he loves me, I barcode, I appreciate you, man. You're a fucking boss. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, loving Vibu over here. And I hope this doesn't make you an anti-fan. 
but this is a fact about StarCraft players. The less you know about how to play StarCraft, the less you know about what is capable of StarCraft. And what I mean by that is, just hear me out. If I'm playing in Silver League and someone says, is that actually Vibe? That's totally understandable to question if it's me or whatever like that. But I want you to know that if I actually myself for real played against someone in Silver League, I would fucking murder that kid. Like it like it wouldn't even be like one of those things where it's like you'd have to gauge it out and be like, hmm, is that actually a pro gamer slash GM player right now playing in my Silver League at his, at his skill level? That's what it is actually like this game has such fucking variance of skill. Now, there's a good chance, here's a real thing. There's a very good chance that if I like I'm not trying to brag or anything, I'm just I'm just trying to let you know that this is where I feel like people just don't understand StarCraft, right? They look at the game and they they don't really know. And the more you, the better you get at this game, the more you realize you don't know shit about it. Because if if a GM player genuinely played a silver player, it is a very realistic thing that the GM player could beat the silver player and lose zero units every single time they play. You could just make stalkers every game and micro stalkers with macro and win every single time and not lose a single unit. That's very real. Sorry about derailing B2GM. I just want the viewers to experience the true battle net chat distraction technique to aid transcendence into true vibrator warrior status. Yo, Burry, thank you very much for the bits, man. No worries, you're all good, dude. Much love. But yeah, I, again, I'm not trying to. I'm just, I'm just explaining the point, which is this. This is the only reason why I think this is relevant. Okay, why I just said what I said. If you guys just stop thinking that you know more than you do, and you take the game back to a degree where you go, let's start from scratch. Let's develop ourselves with all these concepts Vibe is making. You're so much better off. You are so much better off. That's all it is. So, for instance, like now, let, now let's talk about this game. We just got all in by someone who wanted to, you know, do an all in, do it, do a fucking proxy gateway robo in on one base. That's totally fine. It's it it's it is what it is. It's it's fine. It's whatever. And barcode again. I appreciate you, I man. Uh, thanks for being a fan. Hope you're still a fan. Much love, dude. The series helps everybody. <laughs> no, I'm, be I'm being dead serious, guys. If I play a silver player, I will beat that person and lose zero units. Show us how you would do it. Not in this video. Uh, I've done it so many times on my stream. I, I, I Okay, let me give an example, okay? Let, let, let me just give an example. I had a guy in Gold League who was telling me, and it was a GM versus GM game on my stream, and a guy in Gold League was telling me, Vibe, you really need to be doing this, you really need to be doing that, you really need to be doing this. He was backseat gaming the shit out of Will me. Will the real Vibe, Vibe, please stand up? Thank you, KK Mar. Thank you, man. The Gold League player in my stream chat was backseat gaming the fucking shit out of me in my game, in the GM game, when I was actually playing like Zerg or Protoss or something. And then I, you know, talked to him back and forth for a little bit, and then he would he wouldn't he kept just feeling like he was he knew more about StarCraft than I did. And I was like, all right, bro, let's do a fun challenge. And he's still a viewer. I didn't ban him or anything. I'm not a fucking dickhead. But anyways, I made a challenge with him and I said, you pick a unit in the game. Pick any unit you want and I'll kill you with it. And he said observer. And I fucking won that game, guys. And you know what I did? I made like a hundred observers off of like eight robos with mass probes. I ended up making like a hundred probes and like a hundred observers. And I flew into that fucking gold league player's base with a hundred observers. And he killed all those observers and I remaxed my supply in mass probes and I killed him with probes. <laughs> and how did I do that? I killed him because efficiency beats non-efficiency. The, l the less you know about this game, the more you think you know. And the more you actually know about this game, the more you realize you don't know anything. This game is very fucking complex. And it is very learned. Anyone can get good at this game, though, like to a degree. 
Um, not everyone can be a pro gamer in this game, but everyone can at least get to like masters, I would say, if you just put in the time and learn the game step by step by step by step. And again, this is the, uh, this is a, right here. This is an example of efficient macro just beat an all in. In, in, in a masters, guys, guys, if this was GM versus GM or like masters versus masters, I'm not going to fucking play like this anymore because by then we know how to do an economy and we understand what it means to play efficient. Like, we're going to get there at some point, and I'm not going to be like, oh, we're playing against a one-gate fucking, or a one-base robo all-in with proxy? Let's expand twice in his face. I'm not going to do that once we're at higher level play. Because then so many more factors about the game matter. But at lower level, you can 100% go fucking Nexus first, or like, sorry, like early Nexus expand, and still hold against someone who goes for a proxy robo right in my face. So again, let's watch it for a second. He walks in, right? Zella walks to my base. I say, hey, probes and stalker, A move. A move the area. And what happens? That zealot just killed five workers. He just fucking killed five probes, guys. That sucks ass. That's really bad for me. That's a terrible trade, right? <laughs> You're like, oh, God, five probes are dead? Oh, whew, that's a good zealot. Because let me tell you, Zerk, or... Uh, People might not know this. New silver players probably don't know this. A probe costs 50 minerals. A zealot costs 100. He lost one zealot to kill five probes. So that's 250 minerals versus 100. Definitely a good trade for the zealot there. That was definitely a good trade for the fucking... Uh, for red here, for barcode. And now he attacks me again. And what do I do? I A-move my probes and my stalker. Fucking A-move. We can make a new... How about we do We do this? We make a new rule for ourselves. Every time our opponent goes down the ramp, let's just go back to our mineral line. So we don't have to chase him all the way. Because, again, we're not microing at all right now. Our shit's on A-move. We're not even looking at it. We're just making probes still. And then we got so far out of our base that we're like, yeah, let's go back. Thank you, Burry. Ooga chaka ooga 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 chaka ooga ooga I can't stop this feeling deep inside of me girl You just don't realize what efficiency does to me Thank you very much Burry again much love man So now uh, what we're doing again is we're a-moving our probes all over again We're not microing anything That one probe was a hero and he killed the immortal by himself it was not microed and how many how many resources lost have we lost up to this point in this game? He's actually lost more than me. It's very it's very close to even, it's super close to even. But how many probes have I already lost? I've already lost twelve workers. He's only lost one, and he's lost the worker that was up here trying to build batteries in my face. But I've lost twelve workers, and now he's here again. And what's happening here? My units in the front are just dying without being microed. It's okay. And, you know, he's pushing up the ramp and all that shit. And overall, again, resources lost is about the same. Resources lost is about the same, but resources gained is not the same. I am constantly building probes, and I'm always mining a little bit more than he is. And we always have a buffer with our probes if we want to pull them forward to fight with our army. And he's microing his units. He's pulling the immortal back and shit, going forward, pulling the immortal back, going forward. He's salvaging the immortal as much as he possibly can. Kiting back, trying to save it. But the stalker is faster, so it kills it. And we again, we're A-moving, guys. I'm not microing anything. Look at the, Let's look at the APM here. Look at blue's APM. Look at red's APM. We're not fucking microing anything. I am just going A-move. Mine minerals. A-move. Mine minerals. Every time he comes up and down the ramp. And what am I doing between that? Four, five, four, five, four, five, four, five. My opponent is trying to play... Like he's fucking parting or something. And I am playing like a silver player if they macro properly. If, if they actually focus on macro over micro and other things. You guys got to realize as well, this kind of play style is only going to take you so far. This kind of play style is how you get to li literally ma GM at some point. Like masters and GM. Like this play style, if you, get, if you can actually handle playing like this against people who all in you... This is the harder playstyle to master, but it it grows throughout every league if you actually understand how to multitask 
uh, or if you understand how to prioritize economy, and then, and then that develops into multitasking. That's what it does eventually become, right? So you definitely want to focus on your macro as a priority. And we just send our units back because, or we actually, this is, we let our units just stay here for a little while. I think they actually all die. Because we're not microing, we're like, oh, whoops, my units are dying. Again, we could do so much more with our micro here, guys. There's so much more we could fucking do. But again, it's, it's is it the priority? No, it's not. Because I'm fucking playing at 50 APM with just macro. I'm just macroing. And I'm still ahead of supply. Even though I just threw away my army right there because I just let it die. I'm still ahead by 14 supply. Now we pull our probes again because we're like, oh, he's here again. Pull the boys. And look at us. Worker. Worker's good, right? Now he ran he runs down the ramp, so we fall back to our middle line. And we're good to go. And now the supply is getting even more extreme in our in our favor. And this is when we want to take our third base because we're fully saturated on two bases already. So look at our economy now. Our main base is starting to mine out. His main base is mining out. Our natural is fully saturated. Like the economy is getting worse than what it started at this game for him because he's actually losing patches and there is no expansion. This is when this base mines out, the the it's like the time limit. The game's over for him. He has no more money to use. But our economy is only getting stronger, so we're actually building at a faster like he's building at a slower pace and we're always building at a faster pace because we're always increasing our income. We're always increasing our production. And how many probes have died up to this point? I've lost 17 probes already at this point in the game from this attack. Or from these attacks in general. And now we just A-move our army down to the natural. Do we micro anything here? No, we don't. It's literally A-move. And then, you know, now now it's, again, he know, again, like the fact that he GG'd there, it's, it's very real because, he's again, his patches are mining out. And now we have a third base getting set up. And now our, like, now our money is getting even more extreme. And so on and so on. It's, uh, it's definitely up there, right? It's definitely up there. So, macro superior. Macro is how you can get yourselves ahead as a player. <laughs> yeah, to be his friend. Sorry, Barcode. I'm, I'm a fucking ninja on this account. No friends. No sniping. Much love, though, dude. If you're listening. Much love. Anyway, this is B to GM series, guys. B to GM series. This is Silver League at the moment. Okay, this should probably be the last game, maybe. Oh my god, it's Igas. And Silver. <laughs> Funny thing is, is Igas was a, a teammate of mine on Root Gaming who was a pro gamer. A Terran pro gamer for a while. <laughs> what a match. Vibe versus Igas and Silver. <laughs> right on. It's not actually Igas. Okay, let's go ahead and build our pylon. We want the, the radius of the pylon to be around the wall here so we can get a wall going. Doesn't have to be perfect, just needs to be somewhat close to the wall. It could be on the wall or it could be close to the wall. And it needs to not be on this circle to block the nexus. That's the only things we gotta work on here. Okay, let's build our next, build our gateway. Perfect. Let's go ahead and build our gas. Let's chrono boost our nexus. And now make sure a probe is mining his natural and then shift mine back to our natural. Again, this is a Zerg player, so we'll see if he 12 pulls us. If there's no natural, if there's no natural and it's a Zerg player, <clears throat> we'll probably make a Zealot. Or we, we will make a Zealot, because that's scary. Okay, there's no natural. So there, yeah, there is no natural. So it looks like we might be getting all in here again. So there should be a hatchery already if he went hatchery first. If there's not a hatchery, it means that he went pool first. So here's what we can do. 
Let's take another probe down to the er, low ground here. Let's make a zealot. Let's maybe make a second pylon really quick. Let's make uh, like a core. And let's make a second gateway. Go back to mine gas and build our second gas. Okay, and we'll build our we'll, we will build our nexus soon. It's just when someone twelve pulls you like that with the, with the potential of a twelve pull, it's kind of scary. Uh, you could definitely die. So we definitely wanted to play it a little safe. Now here's what we can do: put our zealot in our doorway and put it on hold position. Put it in the doorway and put it on hold position and just let it be. Now let's make our nexus. And rally our probes down to our natural. Probe probe priority first, followed by... So definite probe priority first here. Do not sacrifice probe time to make stalkers. But just <laughs> add gateway units on when the probing is uh, still maximized. Uh, so again, we're still doing a mineral focus here. Mineral focus. Let's get warp gate. Still making probes as a priority. We can now make a uh, sentry because we still want to get a sentry at some point. Keep making probes. Keep making, keep making probes. Keep chrono boosting our probes. We can now make us. We can add on a stalker because we have enough resources for it. Keep making probes. Four or five. Four or five. Four or five. I guess is doing a beta gym series as well. I guess quit playing StarCraft like four years ago, or like six years ago, because he went to go play Dota 2 instead. Okay, and now let's go ahead and take our Robo because we can afford it, and keep making stalkers and probes. Let's also make a battery. The reason why we're going to make a battery is because this is kind of scary. Uh, like our opponent didn't expand, right? So what do we do? We make a battery when they don't expand. Now we can make a loot station. Let's go scout bases on the left all the way to his main. Okay, we can chrono boost our probes. So I just want to say as well, really fast, what I did here against a twelve against someone. Uh, so I didn't know if it's a twelve or not, right? I just saw he didn't have a natural. If someone doesn't have a natural, you can still just do the build we've been doing before, which is one gate expand and then uh, go into. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about it when this game's over. I'll talk about it when this game's over instead of right now. Uh, we'll just focus on what's happening right now instead of talking about what happened before. So we're, we're fully saturated, right? So what are we going to do? We're going to expand again. Okay, he's here, so we can't expand. Let's send our, uni our units over there and try to expand now. Take a couple of gases. Make our pylons. And now put our army kind of in the middle of our base. Okay, so he's in my he got units in my base, that's fine. We'll just go like this. A move. Shift, right click the mineral patch. Okay. Chronomus probes, chronomus probes. Fix my economy. Fix my gases. Fix my gases. What's going on up here? Fix that gas and put one more probe in this gas. This base is good. This base needs to move some some over. Four go there. All rally there. One more go over. All bases are good. Awesome. Let's go ahead and look at my money. I can't spend it, right? We're getting a little bit of extra money. So let's go ahead and add on our forges and our council. Because I can't spend my money. Like I, I, I just can't. I don't have enough production stuff. Let's also make another sentry hallucination. This time, let's go up the right side of the map. 
let's see how many bases this guy has. Money's getting pretty high. Let's go ahead and throw down like a couple more gates. Can you explain how you decide when to build more supply for each race? I stare at the top right the entire time. Four, uh, guys, what I'm doing, Doug, thank you very much for the bits. Guys, what I'm doing, four, five, four, five, four, five. I'm constantly looking at my supply. I'm, I'm always looking up here and at my resources. I'm managing four, five, and this. Just like how, how do I know when to build production? I know my money goes up and I'm like, I can't spend anything though. Well, shit. I just literally put these on cooldown now. I can't build anything for the next like 30 seconds. These are all building. My money's going up. What do I want to do with it? I need to think about another thing to do with my money. And it's what I just made, which is these. There you go. Upgrades. Boom. My nexus is at full saturation. What do I got to do with it? I need to expand again. My supply is getting close to max. So what do I do? I make a couple pylons. I always am looking. I'm, ma I'm always managing my, my resources. My supply, my gas, and my minerals. I'm always looking at it. We've been That's what we do we're doing the whole time so far. We're always just uh, making sure we know what the hell's going on with our economy. And then whenever we have time as well, we take a pass through our base and go, okay, do I need to build? Do I, do I, do I need to rotate units? Do I, what do I need to do here? Okay, let's transfer some probes over. This base is super oversaturated. Oh, yo, Doug, thank you very much for the bits, man. Much, much appreciated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, so our probing is done. We're going to have 85 when these probes come out. And look at my money. Watch my money. Look at my supply. My supply is good, but look at my money. I can't spend it. This is the exact thing I'm talking about where I'm like, this is when you add production on. This is when it makes sense. I'm like, I can't spend it. It's going up pretty fast. It's at on six gates. Shift click the mineral line. Corner boost my upgrades. This is fully saturated. Take another base. How do I know that I my money's good and stuff like that? I'm always watching up here. We can add in uh, archives. Why do I? Why did I think add archives? Well, I need to do it after this anyways. But I just noticed my minerals were really low for a second, and my gas was high. Now it's kind of back to minerals being high. But for a moment there, my gas was high, and my minerals were kind of low. Okay, let's go to boost my upgrades. Let's take our sentry and make another another Phoenix Scout go on the left side of the map because we're getting ready to want to attack soon, so we're just waiting on production to make shit. Look at my money. I still can't spend it. It's really high, even higher. One, two, three, four. We're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting to spend our money, but I can't. Let's fix our gases here. Fix our gases. Make a bunch of units. Mineral field depleted. Fix that. The space needs gas as well. I didn't, like, see, I'm, I'm checking my bases, right? I keep going around. This has probably not been mining gas for a long time, but now we fixed it. We're always keeping tabs on these things. We're not just never looking at our base. I'm not. I'm not fixating on his base. I'm really only looking at his base through the mini map. I'm not actually looking at his base. I'm not like going over his base, being like, "What are we dealing with here? What is? What does all of this mean right now? What is this?" No, it's all minimap. It doesn't matter what he has. It just matters where it's located. Like, is his base middle right? Is it top right? Like, does, where is his expansions located? So now we know his exp furthest exposed expansion is definitely right there because we saw that earlier. So we're maxed out. Let's take our army and let's A-move here. Then we can honestly maybe A-move. Just A-move there for now. Just A-move there for now. But you know, fuck it. A-move there. A-move here. A-move there. A-move there. Make it easy. We don't got to do all this weird shit. Right click our observer onto an immortal. Call it a day. Look at my money. Really high. Look at my production. We're at 13. Gotta add to that. One, two, three, four, five gateways right there. Shift click the mineral line. Let's make a robo in here. One, two, three, four, five, five. Shift click the mineral line. And then like one, two, three. Make a couple gases as well. We're done. Now I'll grab my robo. Good to go. I can start making a bunch of stalkers. We're, we're capped. Let's start 3-3 three, three upgrades. 
uh, on this. And then right after we start, because this is about done, so we're gonna do it right now. And after we start through three upgrades, let's go back and check our mineral lines. Good, bad, grab a probe. Uh, this one's stuck. There we, or, yeah, we stuck him somehow. So if he's stuck, we can just, if, if, fuck it, he's stuck, whatever. Don't worry about it. Uh, all right, whatever. Good to go. Make a couple more probes again. All right, a couple more stalkers again. I didn't let me say probes, sorry. Couldn't booster upgrades. <laughs> if you wanted to fix this, here's an easy way you could fix this. Make another pylon like right there. And make another pylon like right, like right here. And we can just grab a unit and we can come kill this pylon. So this way it's not gonna be a wall there. And there we go, easy peasy. Okay. Uh, yeah, we can definitely uh, build another base over here. Take our resources. Let's re a move his main base because I mean our army's not dying, so just go to his main base. It's fine. And now take my warp gate hockey, shift into my warp my gateway hockey, and now let's go back once again into making units. And we're maxed out again. Let's transfer a probe. Probes are good. Probes are good. Probes are good. Probes are not existing here, but it's fine. Better feel depleted, boys. Where's that at? Right there. Transfer some probes. Go up here. It's all good. Transfer one probe to that gas. We're all good. Okay, cool. Uh, so now we can see... Okay, this guy is using lurkers. Oh, we just saw a lurker. If you see shit like that, just go like this. Like, same thing as DTs with Protoss. Cannon. Cannon. Battery. Cannon. Cannon. Battery. Because what if this guy attacks us with lurkers and I'm not ready for it? I just happen to be ready for it there just now. Who knows, though? Cannon. Cannon. Battery. Cannon. Cannon. Battery. Cannon. Cannon. Battery. Cannon. Cannon. Battery. Just put them near the mineral line and space them so your probes can still fit through between them. Okay. Now our army's pretty much doing nothing in the main now. So let's select all army and go A move, shift 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 A move. What we just did was we just A moved every single potential base on the entire map. Every base on the map we just A moved that exists, that could potentially have a base of Zerg at it. Some of them we know exist, but I don't know. They all might have it. So we're just going to move everything because this seems like he's dead at this point. So let's just uh, let's just make sure we get the kill here. Let's just start killing all the bases. Nice. Okay. So let me. Ex this is what I wanted to explain at the beginning of the game. Okay. If a Zerg player, if a Zerg player, ever does not have. Uh, assign probe to gas, he'll escape. He would not escape. Oh my god, my neck. So let me let me tell you something really fast. If a probe was trapped right there, right there, and I told him to mine gas, he would disappear into the gas, and then he would reappear where he just entered from. So whenever a probe goes into a gas, they always come out where they entered from, so he would still be stuck down there. So it would, it, In theory, it would be cool if it worked right, but it wouldn't. He would still be stuck. Uh, now, when our probe gets across the map to the Zerg's base, okay, we go, cool, build a gateway, and we go like this, we're scouting, we're scouting, we're scouting, we're scouting, we're all we're doing is scouting the natural. I just want you guys to know something, okay? I want you to know something. A Zerg should 100% have a natural by now in the game. If they don't have one, it means they went pool first. Now, or they went proxy hatch or whatever. Again, we don't have to go super deep into the details of what it means, okay? It just means that there's some fishy shit's going on, possibly. So, there are two ways to react to it as a Protoss player. If you're playing against Zerg and you go, oh, there's no natural here for Zerg. If you don't want to make it too complicated, just do the build as we've always been doing it, which is now we go for, like, we have a gas, then we take our nexus, then we take our core... Then we take our second gas and our pylon. We start making stalker and then a sentry. We skip zealot altogether. 
and we just go into like stalkers and immortals and shit like that. You could totally do that. And it, I will say this in silver, you will, I've already done it before against another Zerg who went for a 12 pool. You'll get away with it. Most of the time, you'll probably get away with it most of the time and you won't get punished for it. But every once in a while you might. So if you're like vibe, I, I want an idea about how to play against a Zerg who actually 12 pulls me. And not just die every time while I'm trying to like build a pylon down here and the pylon gets killed and then I just die. How do I deal with it if I want to do a more stable defense against 12 pool? This is what you can do. What I just did this game. Don't get carried away. Do not get carried away and be like, let's never build a nexus now. This is what everyone in fucking silver does. Don't be the guy that never builds a nexus. But what we do instead now is I make a second pylon. I don't make... So here's the thing. I don't build my second gas. Why am I not building my second gas? A gateway costs minerals only. A core costs minerals only. A zealot costs minerals only. Hold on. Damn vibe, you just ignore my 1v1 challenge altogether. I said it doesn't have to be tonight, lol. What? Sorry, did, what, when did you say that? If you if you said it to me in chat, I'm not really reading chat very much, Koopa. Uh, thank you for the bits, though. And yeah, I'm, I'm definitely not going to do a 1v1 challenge in the middle of a beat the gym video. And he's, I know he's, now you said it doesn't have to be tonight, and I, I heard that in a bit drop. But dude, I'm not reading all of chat right now. I'm barely reading any of chat. Just throwing it out there. I'm focusing a lot on making the series right now. Uh, so think about it like this, guys. Uh, minerals? We're, we're focusing on minerals, right? We're not taking our second gas right now. Why? Gateway. Mineral cost only. Core. Mineral cost only. Uh, which is something we're going to add to the wall now. Nexus, the three things now, mineral cost only. Continue to make probes, mineral cost only. The zealot, mineral cost only. Making a second pylon faster because we now make a zealot, which increases our supply faster. Mineral cost only. These are all mineral cost only things, okay? So don't fucking rush your second gas here. And what we can do now is we can go for a, a core, a second gateway, we make our zealot and then we make our nexus while making probes. And then once we make the nexus, then we go back to making stalkers and sentry and stalkers and our robo. But again, we only do that as well off of probes as a priority. I don't just stop making probes and I don't just stop making a nexus to go for mass fucking units off of a wall. That's what most people do and then most people freak out and they play poorly because of that. We still make our wall. We still make units periodically out of it. But we still prioritize the economy elements of it after the wall. And again, the wall is something you can do if you're afraid of dying to a 12 pool from Zerg, which is exactly what this guy did. This guy went for an early as fuck gas pool opener. And then he starts making links. The only problem with his build is, is he made too many drones, which is why it was less intimidating. It could have done it could have been more aggressive than that. Inefficiency versus efficiency, right? This was uh, an inefficient 12 pool. 13 12. Then he comes across the map and he's chilling. He sees my zealot with the overlord and he's like, ah, fuck it. I'll wait. Which is fine. But now, because we're gonna still we're focusing on our economy. We're focusing on our economy. We're not falling behind. I'm actually getting way ahead. So think about it like this. My opponent deviated from economy to do this. We deviated from economy to do this first. But we went right back in economy really fast. And we're maintaining a nice fat economy lead, which is also allowing us to maintain a nice economy or a nice supply lead. And our opponent is investing maybe a little bit too hard into the randomness of the early game, which is why we're getting so far ahead. Also, here's a quick tip. There's two things about the natural that are very important to know. Number one is look at how I built the shield battery and the pylon and notice how there's a gap between them. The reason why th this is intentional, by the way, the reason why there's one little gap between my battery and my pylon is because what if this guy, like, I don't know what he's doing. I'm not scouting anything, right? And I'm just playing defensive. But what if this guy would have gone for ravagers and he would have just corrosive bile down my pylon and my battery at the same time? Because that is an AoE spell. It stands for Area of Effect. It hits multiple things. And what if you cast it in the middle of my my battery and my cannon? Or sorry, my battery and my pylon. And if they were built directly on top of each other, like touching sides, they could both die at the same time. And then that drastically increases the chance I could die here. 
But however, if I spread them out, if I spread out my battery and my pylon, now suddenly he can only hit one building or the other if he were to do something like that. So it, it, again, this is a super simple macro-oriented thing. This is something you'll probably never see in Silver League, which is why I almost almost was like, maybe I shouldn't even say this. But I'm just telling you why I did it. It makes our defense super strong. And I also made a second pylon as well in case he kills my first pylon. That way our battery still stands. If he focuses the pylon, we have a second pylon to fall back on for our battery. So it, again, just increases the chances we're not going to die. <laughs> but the biggest thing of all is the macro, right? We just have we just have a lot. We have we have a lot of supply because we have a lot of income and we're good to go here. And also that was a that was a big important thing we need to talk about too. I kind of brushed over that. So if you ever get in a situation where the Zerg is like trying to multitask you like this and he's like I'm going to get leaves in your base. There are two ways. This is a judgment call. There are two ways to fight this. Number one, if the ling count is like one fourth of the mineral line or less. So what does that mean? Each base has about 22 workers at it. Okay. Each base has about 22 workers at it. And if what is one fourth of 22, one fourth of 22 is roughly about five or six. It's not exact. Okay. It's a decimal. But if, if only like five or six or anything less than that of lings run into my mineral line we are totally able to fight that with our probes and kill it and not be worried about it however if like anything more than that comes to the mineral line you might want to if, if you're really wanting to know an idea of how to save your probes ideally if let's say this was like 12 links or this is like 18 links i got in my base i would not fucking a move the links with my probes because all my probes would die what I could do, there's a lot of things we can do here. And we're, we're not talking about micro yet. We'll talk about the macro ideas you can do. What we could do, if this was a shitload of lings I got in my base, is I could go ar select all army and move back to the main to try and fix it. Like to kill the army, to kill his army with my army when my army eventually gets back there. And I could I could green box my probes and go right click the mineral line at my natural, hold shift and right click the mineral line at my main. So it tells all my probes to mineral walk to my natural and then come back to my main afterwards. And what that's going to do is it's going to drag the lings back towards my army, if that were to be a case. But because this is such a little amount of lings, all we did here was I greenboxed my probes. I A-move the ground. I don't A-move a ling. I A-move the ground. So it makes all my probes attack nearest target. Because uh, that's what they do. If, you're tell if you tell a, a unit, A-move to an area, and then it encounters something in the process, it'll attack it. So if we A-move the ground, they're already close enough to attack lings as it is. So you can aim of the ground, hold shift, right click the mineral line. So it tells the link it tells the probes, kill the kill the lings, and then start mining minerals when you're done with that job. So that's what it looks like. They move to an area, and they start mining minerals right after they do that. Easy peasy. Oh no, look at the supply. Efficiency beats not efficiency. Happens every time. This is going to be the core concept of our whole beta gym series up until the Diamond League. We're going to still add on little by little more and more as we go. But this is this is exactly why. Whenever I have people in Platinum League or below Platinum League being like, Vibe, how do I get out of this league, man? What do I do? How do I... like what, uh, Vibe, should I do the build of like, you know, Tempest and T High Templar with Disruptor... And all these other crazy fucking things in like gold one or platinum three. And I'm just like, no, don't do crazy shit. All you got to do to get out of platinum and anything below platinum, like to get into diamond league, essentially, is you just got to get your macro better. There's so much to your macro that can be improved. If you just really, you know, fixate on it and work on it. And again, it's also mandatory to have in diamond league. It's not even something that goes away. It never goes away. Like your macro. And here's the thing. A diamond three player would not even remotely have the same amount of macro as like a GM player or a Masters 1 player. Like the G the, the Diamond player is going to struggle to keep up with the Masters 1 player. So it never ends. It's just it like by default, you have to be able to play a standard game. And we'll talk more. We'll talk a lot more about this. Like we don't talk about this in a Silver 2 video. 
We'll talk so much more about this once we get up there. But macro never ends, guys. It never ends. So I'm saying developing good habits. We're developing the, the process of you understanding what the fuck macro is. And if you can understand that, that opens up the key to get for you to get better at the game overall. So important. Okay, so our army is now A-moving. And it's it's A-moving a guy who's going for lurkers and spines. And he's got a hunter less supply than I do. It's a rough city for him. Rough life for the Zerg player here. And then his main's dead. And, uh, yeah. There's not much he can do at this point, guys. He's super dead. Uh, yeah. Efficiency, a move. Okay. I hope this is not bugged. I'm going to really quickly relog because it might be bugged. And if it is, all we need is one more win and it's a guaranteed promotion because I know where my other racism in Mar is right now. Oh, Let's see. Yeah. Yo, Fugsy, thank B2 you. GM hecky boy. Thank you very much, Fugsy. Appreciate it, dude. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the four month resub, dude. So yeah, like for instance, my MMR right now on my Terran is 2185 in bronze one. MMR on Zerg is 2188 on bronze or on silver one. So silver one, 2085, 2188, both silver one. Protoss is 2179. It's within 10 and it's still bronze two. So, or uh, Jesus, silver two. So hopefully uh, the league promotions don't get bugged in this game right now because that would make it lame. Much love, though, Fugsy. Thank you, man. <clears throat> B to GM. Yeah, boy. Okay, so this is a Terran player, so we're just going to build random. <laughs> build around our base. We'll worry about wall. Like, here's... Actually, I'll show you what a, pro a proper wall looks like, okay? I'll just show you what it looks like. We'll describe this more as we get higher league. For now, no one's going to really use this. No one's gonna, you're not going to be able to abuse this at all at this league. No one's going to do the concept of why this is relevant. But when we get to higher level, this is all we're going to do against Terran. Right here. And we just created a wall between the wall and our mineral patches. And what it does is it makes Reapers really hard to move around your base. That's, what it, that's all it does. Again, that's what it's going to look like when we get higher level. But for now, we don't have to worry about it. It's definitely easy to do. Uh, it's just for now, it's, it seems kind of pointless to fixate on that. So let's click his mineral patch. Shift click our mineral patch at the natural. Shift click the mineral patches at the natural. Ugh. Okay, look guys, there's no natural. There's no natural, right? So what are we gonna do? Just make a battery. We're just going to make a battery. Eventually. Like, we're not going to rush the battery because we can't even build it until we have a core. It's a tech path. But we're eventually going to build the battery at the natural. We're going to make one early when we can. My boo best stream. Thank you, Legacy. Much love, dude. Appreciate it. Let's build our gas. Let's build a pylon. Right, right click the, the probe on the assimilator now. Right click the nexus on the assimilator. We're good. Let's build another pylon at my third now, and this will become the shield battery. This, is, this probe is the one that was just shift clicked on my natural mineral. He, he was the scout, so it's fine. Now we can start a stalker. We can start warp gate. We can also chrono boost my main and rally my main to my natural. Thank you. Uh, Remember, guys, Thank you. when you Hussain. fix your mineral, red is wrong, but white is right. Remember that. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> I yep. hear the shadows. Let's go ahead and build our battery. Put my units down here in the front of the natural.
Go oh, extra money. Build our robo on our gate. How did I know that? I'm watching my money. I didn't, I'm not just staring blindly into the abyss of nothingness and going, I don't know what's going on right now. I'm, my eyes are up here all the time. Let, let me just, for the next like two minutes of this game, let me tell you where my eyes are, okay? Top right, top right, top right, top right, top right, middle of the screen, top right, middle of the screen. I see Nexus, we're good. Move down here, top right, top right. I need pylons, top right. Down here in production, four, five, four, five, four, five. Middle screen, build my thing. Top right needs supply. Let's go ahead and build our pylons. We just built two pylons. Now bottom of the screen, production, four, five, four, five. Let's go back to our, na our natural because we know right after we expand, we're gonna take our gas. So build our gas. Top right, keep making probes, bottom middle. Uh, make our observer, make our stalker with a warp gate. Top right. We need more pylons again, so let's make like one more pylon. We're getting closer again. We're within like 15. Uh, four or five, the bottom middle. Make a stalker. Make probes. Put my probes on the gas. We're getting all in, so let's just go ahead and overcharge the battery. Because we can. Make a mortal. Top right. Supply is getting close. Let's make another pylon. Money's getting, money's pretty well spent though, so we can't really do anything with that, so we're good up there. And I just made a pylon, so we're good for a little bit on that. Bottom middle, four or five. Make a couple stalkers. Make a couple, make an immortal, mortal's good. Let's transfer some probes, so let's transfer five over. Rally all my nexus to the, to the third base. And once again, top right, top right's great. Bottom middle for four or five, four or five, four or five. Chrono boost, chrono boost. Chrono boost in the middle of the screen. Go back to four or five. Probes are great on the Nexus. We have a lot of probes queued up, but like two on each Nexus. Four, we need to definitely build some stuff here. Immortal, Immortal, Stalker. Or sorry, Stalker, Stalker, Immortal. Four or five, four or five. And uh, there we go. We're getting close to supply blocking again. Let's go ahead and build a couple of pylons. Look at, the, look at the Nexus. We're getting really close to, it's fully saturated now. So grab a probe off. Let's go expand again. Let's go ahead and build a pylon. Build a pylon. So we can do warp ins around the Nexus if need be. Look at the supply. We're still making pylons now, so that's gonna be fixed. Okay, look at the mini-map. Attack that on the red big glowy shit. Okay, keep making units. Four or five, four or five. Keep chrono boosting units. Chrono boost units. Chrono boost units. Let's wait. Uh, look at the top right, we're good. It's nothing too bad right now. This is looking pretty bad. Let's aim move our probes. Four or five, four or five, four or five. Make an immortal. Keep making probes. Okay. Four or five. Transfer some probes. Come down to our third base. Okay. Have these probes go back in my minerals. Let's get some more production now. Because again, I can't really spend my money anymore. Because look at four or five. I, I, uh, with four or five, I just spent everything. And I have, even have an immortal queued behind an immortal right now. And my money is going up now. And all my nexuses are queued up as well. So... I'm going to start having a lot of money pretty fast. We also have another Nexus finishing right now. And I don't need pylons for a while. Why? Because we just took a lot of damage. A lot of things died. So 4 or 5 is still a priority. But I definitely feel like I can afford some more production now. Because I can't spend the money. Like, we're about to also finish probes. Probes is super close to finishing. That's the concept here, right? So let's go ahead and build another uh, council. Let's build a couple forges. We can start a couple more pylons here, just for building area now this time. That's not necessarily for supply blocking. And we need some, let's build some more gateways too. Gateway, 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 gateway. Go back to four or five. Four, make a couple stalkers. Make an immortal when we can. Fix these gases. Look at five, Nexus, need probes. We have a mortal being started right now. And probing is just about done. What's the space look like? It's about to be fully saturated. Let's take another Nexus. Send a probe up here right now. We'll build it in a second. Grab these gateways and put them on a control group. Grab our upgrades and get ready to use them. Probing, four, five, four, five, four, five. Fix, four, five. Nexus, we need four more probes. We're good. This probe probably just arrived here. We saw it on the mini-map as well. Let's build our Nexus that we need. Let's go ahead and build a couple pylon. And how do I know I'm not supply blocking? I'm looking at top right right now. Look at my money. Look at that gas. So we need a Templar Archives because that's why we that's, we balance our resources, right? Let's start kind of boosting our upgrades. Four or five. Let's make some Stalkers. Let's make an Immortal. And now we're good on probes. 
add this to group five. And we're getting attacked on the third base. Let's A move our army over there. A move our army to that area. Let's take these gases right here. And don't forget, four or five, four or five, four or five. Don't stop macroing. Did we lose any probes? We lost one probe. Fix it. Four or five, four or five. Incredible booster upgrades. And look at my money. I can't even spend it. I can't even spend my money. I have too much fucking money. So what am I going to do? One, two, three, four. Because I'm looking at four or five a lot. Big okay, double stalkers. That's the concept. That right there is the concept of what we're doing. How do I know not spy block? Because my eyeballs are always looking at the top right. I'm always gauging my money. Is my money going up faster than I can spend it? If the answer is yes, well, I better fucking be checking four or five. Because if that's if, if the answer is yes, my money's going up, but I'm doing nothing with four or five, which is nexuses in production of Gateway Robo, then I, well, that obviously that's why my money's going up. If I'm not building units, that there's no cost of units now, so my money just goes up. <laughs> and if my money is going up and four or five is being used, that means I probably have a high probe count, so that the current amount of production I have is not enough to spend my money. So I need more production then. So that's when you add more and it makes sense to do that then because we're maintaining production. So it's a lot of checking up here. It's a lot of checking down here at four or five, this area down here in the bottom middle to make sure we're producing units when we need to. And then finally, when we're not doing either one of those, it's a lot of checking here, a lot of checking here, a lot of checking here, making sure our economy is fucking mining the whole time. Vibe, this is exhausting. It is going to be exhausting for a newer player. 100% it will be. It's going to totally be exhausting for a newer player. And why is that? Because your macro fucking needs improvement. Guys, I can... I, everything I just did right there, I can do that on autopilot. I can do that like as good as I do this. It's like fucking breathing. You legit need to do this so much that it becomes fucking breathing to you. It's like, it's like an automated reflex of the game. Macro should not be something you have to use brain power to do. It's something that you do as a like an automated reflex. It's a response. It's just normal. It's, it's, it's everyday nature to you. And how do you get to that point? You practice it. You do it a lot. You don't do it for 20 minutes and go, I'm ready to micro like Cyril now. No, that's not how it goes. It never ends. If you want to play StarCraft 2, competitively like if you want to be if you want to feel competitive when you play this game and always feel like you're improving and trying to play the best you can macro never stops it never stops there's no end point to it not even a pro gamer has stopped macroing it only gets harder as you go but here's the thing it's like, like imagine this imagine let, let me let me give you an analogy again here comes the analogies we'll use weights as an example if you are a guy who goes to the gym and you weigh uh, 100 pounds or like 120 pounds, which is in, a kilo, in kilograms, that's probably uh, like 40 kilograms or like 45 kilograms, somewhere around there. Okay? If you weigh that much, you're not going to go to the gym and be like, all right, I'm going to do squats today and I'm looking to do 500 pound squats day one. Like, no. You're not going to fucking do that. You haven't built yourself up to that point yet. But let's put it this way, though. What if you're someone who was going to the gym and you're 100 pounds and you're like, OK, well, I'm going to now start doing things. I'm going to start like working out and I'm going to slowly start building muscle mass. I'm going to do maybe I'm going to do like bar only squats. I'm going to get my form down. I'm going to get the right form of everything. And then I'm going to slowly add weight onto it. And I'm going to do it every time until I feel exhausted. And I'm going to keep doing this. And I'm going to build myself up like maybe two and a half to five pounds every time I advance. So maybe the, you start off by squatting like 40 pounds. And then when you when you get that down really well and it's like 40 pounds doesn't feel that hard. Now you're doing 45 pounds. And then that doesn't feel hard. And then you do 50 pounds. And then you do 55 pounds. And then you do... But maybe do 65 pounds and then you do 75 pounds and then you do 90 pounds and like you slowly increase it as you can handle it and then before you know it the idea of doing like a 500 pound squat which is fucking insane by the way but i'm just giving you an example here the idea of doing that is actually doable because and the idea of what you used to do 
when you first started is like fucking easy. Like once you can actually handle, like let's say you're doing, let's say your goal is to squat 500 pounds and you had to start at 50. By the time you get to like 250 is like your normal. Go back and do like 150, which when you first started, 150 would have felt insane. Like how the fuck can I do this? I can't do that. But now that you're doing 250 as your standard, going back and doing 150 is like, this is so easy, dude. I'm doing this easy peasy all day. I could do it like literally for an hour straight. I'm not even, I'm not even straining myself. It's the same thing with macro and and like gameplay in StarCraft too. You need to fucking build yourself up as a player to handle more shit. And the faster you build yourself up, you're not gonna look at me going, look at the bottom, look at the top, look at the bottom, look at the top, look at the middle, change your resources, fix your economy. You're not gonna be like, this is exhausting. You're gonna be like, this is fucking easy. Because how long I'm guys here's and here's the again I've said this like 50 times already throughout the series but I keep saying it in a different way because I keep trying to convince everyone here and like make sure you guys understand like not even that convinced I'm trying to make sure you understand what the hell I'm talking about and everyone learns different ways guys what I'm doing right here with macro isn't even that fast the higher level like I actually me as a player who can definitely macro fast in this what I'm doing this is fucking like I could do it with, with one hand, and I'm just like, yep. And the reason why I can do it with, like so, uh, the reason why it feels easy to me is because I have done more intense macro than this. Because again, it grows so much. This is not even like pristine macro. It grows so much that what we're doing right now feels ridiculously easy. And you, everybody, everybody grows as a player, as a as a person, as a player. The more you practice it, the better you'll get. And you will, as well, will eventually get to a point where you'll be like, yeah, those silver videos felt easy. Go back to it. Like, literally, if you watch the series, do it for fun. Like, wherever you, wherever you start, let's say you start in Silver League. And let's say you get promoted twice. And now you're in fucking Platinum. Just for fun, when you're in Platinum, go back and try to do a silver build. Like, go back and try to do, like, silver, like, capabilities. And you'll be like, I used to struggle with this. This is so fucking easy because you understand how to macro like and it, now and the same thing. What if you get what if you started in gold league and now what if it, like, an extreme one? What if you started in gold league and then a year later you're like vibe. I'm in masters one. Go back and fucking and when you're, while you're in masters one, go back to a, um, a gold video and like play against AI or something and try to like comp like try to like stay up with a gold video and see if you can do it. And you'll be like. Dude, I feel like I have to just like take my hands off the keyboard repeatedly all the time in the mouse because I feel like if I don't, I'm going to play way faster than my goal can handle. It happens all the time to everybody. So you will grow as a player. It happens to everybody. Just understanding that you have to develop yourself as a player is the, is the priority, right? That's the, that's the priority. Uh-uh, uh-uh. And I know there's going to be a lot of people that are, uh, you know, that will probably hear what I'm saying and be like, yeah, you know what, Vibe? I, I feel like I want to take your advice. I like it. And there's probably a lot of people out there that are like, nah, I'm still going to break the rules. I'm going to play like a Masters player in fucking Gold League. And I'm just like, suit yourself, dude. You're going to be there forever then. It's, it's, uh, you're not going to advance really. <laughs> but again, if you have fun doing that, then that's by all means have fun. And again, the game is supposed to be about fun. So do whatever you want for fun. So check, check this out, guys. Our opponent attacks us, right? And we don't even know what's going on. I just know I'm getting attacked. So what do I do? I just say quickly, hey, battery, overcharge. What the battery overcharge does is it makes the battery cost no energy to heal for 14 seconds. Normally, it costs energy. It depletes energy like a medevac to heal units. It's like the Protoss medevac. Uh, so now with the battery overcharge on, it doesn't cost any energy to heal. And secondly... Um, what it does as well is it uh, heals at twice the pace of what it normally does. So it heals twice as fast. So if it heals for 30 shields a second, now it heals for 60 shields a second during the 14 second overcharge. So it makes it basically is like a supreme defense. It's very fucking strong. It's hard to break through, which is why this turn player with the big army hasn't even killed my sentry yet. And we're not microing, guys. I didn't pop guardian shield. I didn't fucking pull my sentry back. I didn't do anything. I just fucking turn on overcharge. And this thing more than enough handle the situation. It's super good. And our units just fall back. Again, I'm not micring this. They just 
de-aggroed. They fell back. They leashed back to my base. Back to where they started. And now look at the situation here. Terran is on a supply that is almost half of my supply now. It's getting lower by the second because we're, we're growing at a faster pace. We're mining much more than he is. And even though our opponent is now deciding to expand and progress this game beyond this, he is in a position where, again, this this needs to kill like my third and my natural for this to put him in a good position. And what happens when he attacks? Let's see. We're actually like basically double the supply again. Here we go. He attacks. My army is super scattered as well. Not great, right? He's killing my probes right now. More of my army shows up. So more of my army is still scattered. It's not even properly fighting. We pull our probes. Because, again, you're more than welcome to attack with your probes if you're getting attacked like that. And you're like... If you if you look at your base and you and you feel pressured and you're like, Oh, God. I could die right now. Fucking attack with your probes. Don't just sit there and mine minerals and let them die. You can totally attack with your probes. That's totally fine. Go for it. And now, look at the situation again. We're more than double supply. How many probes died? Well, how much resources died? We lost more than him by quite a bit, by about 700. And, or eight, or like, yeah, 700. And then we've also lost 14 probes. He's lost nothing. But even though that's how it goes, we're still ahead by a fuckload. It's 73 versus 27. This is insane, right? Like, this is just macro. We're mining so much more than our opponent is right now. So now our supply is really going to start going fast. And again, guys, anyone out there who's always like, Vibe, you never get all-in in your videos. And I always do. How do you defend all-ins? Look. Just make fucking... Make stuff. Just worry about your... Make your macro faster. It's always the answer. If you're not... In Diamond League, if you're in Platinum or below, it's always your macro. It's always your macro. Every single time. And the reason why, again, I, I've said it now five million times. People in Platinum and below Platinum never really play efficient. They never play efficient. And we could, I could break down... I, again, I'm not trying to pick on anyone here. But I'm sure I could break down my opponent's build right now and talk about ways that it's inefficient. And again, what overall vibe... What does inefficiency mean? Too many buildings with not enough uptime of those buildings. At the sacrifice of your economy. That is inefficient. If I'm going to go, okay, I'm going to stop making SCVs. I'm going to stop making Marines. And I'm going to make more barracks. No production. That's bad. Hey, Vibe. I just got my stimulus today, so here's a little stim pack from me. Super excited about newbie 2 gm Yo, Thank you very much, uh, HitFam, for the dollar dono, man. Much love. And uh, congrats on the stimulus, dude. Thanks for plopping into the stream uh, with, a, with the dono, man. Much love. Okay, so he pushes me again, right? And the Saren's probably feeling frisky right now, right? He's like, okay, I got another Marine Marauder. I got Stimpak plus one this time. I'm ready. And we, our army is once again scattered all over the place. My army's fucking scattered in every base. I have been macroing randomly all over the place. So my this is like the best case scenario for Terran. My army is not at full power right now. It's fucking all it's randomly messy across my base. And we're taking a lot of losses here. But again, does it matter? It doesn't really matter. Because we have so much supply that I'm I'm able to play sloppy like this and we can still crush. Because more beats less. And then at this point, I mean, there's really no chance. Uh, th we're mining at a pace of 85 probes versus 37 SCVs, guys. That's not even a remotely close economy. That's not even close. And then, th you know, we're going to max out by the time the Terran player gets to, like, 80 supply. At this point. It's insane. Also, we have all these production buildings coming online right now that we just made. So, we're definitely going to max out pretty fast. Okay, hopefully we get a promo. If not, it's bugged. Okay, it's bugged. Okay, so this is effectively the end of Silver 2. I I think Protoss might be bugged the entire time now, guys. That kind of sucks. Um, because for some reason, 
Are they all bugged now? That's so lame. My god. It says they're all bronze three. And they're all they're all on their way to Masters 3. They're all bugged. So unfortunately that is the case. Um, I will do some artificial promos now. Uh, I didn't want to have to do this, but uh, it is what it is. So I'm not gonna end the video just yet while I keep talking, and I'm now gonna I'm not gonna this is gonna be the first one I have to do this on. Uh, but this is now what we have to do, guys. This is uh this is the ghetto life here. But it, you got to do what you got to do, right? You got to do what you got to do. And this is what we got to do. I'm sorry. Uh, but yeah, so f what did we learn, right? We learned that... Uh, we learned that the... Um, the situation at hand was... Uh, we learned that the situation at hand is really just about our macro again, right? It's really what it is. And now, let's go ahead and make big Vibu here so I can do this properly without making weird graphics. Okay. And we'll go like this. And now, congratulations to us, guys. We are getting ourselves a promotion. This is now going to be Silver One Promo. Oh my fucking God. Here we go. Whoa, baby. <laughs> Look at it. Whoa. Oh, my God. Silver one. We made it, everybody. That's sick. I'm so proud of ourselves right now. We did it. So, guys, uh, thank you for watching. Thanks for sticking mute with me to uh, to this. I'm uh, sorry. Now my promotions have to be ghetto. I mean, blame Starcraft. They have a buggy ass game at the moment, and they're not fixing it. Um, whoop. Okay, now we got to pause that there. But thanks, guys. Much love. Appreciate you watching, and I will see you guys again in the next video in Silver One to Gold Three. So until then, much love. Take it easy. Good luck and peace.